and Michael Remus. Hey, what is going on, Winnipeg? And welcome to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. We have a banger of a show today for a Thursday afternoon for you. Breaking down another big win on home ice for the first place Winnipeg Jets. I told you that we would intro them as the first place Jets if they won last night, and they certainly took care of business. And not only will we be breaking down the big win, but we'll also be welcoming in the toast of the town, the hottest player in the National Hockey League, Gabriel Velarde, who was a big part of the Jets' win last night against the Detroit Red Wings. Scott Billick's going to jump on. We'll discuss the latest with the Jets and look ahead to tomorrow's huge tilt heading into Christmas on Friday night with the Boston Bruins. Jeff Hamilton will join us as well. Talk a little Jets and a little Bombers. Another big signing by the Blue and Gold today, announced Dietrich Nichols back on a contract with the Blue and Gold. Um, and we will also have another segment of our It Takes a Community to Play segment with the uh, coaching education coordinator over at Sport Manitoba, Ariella Shimnowski. Looking forward to that as well. But uh, Velarde, Billick, Hammer, and our Sport Manitoba segment, it is going to be a good one. And uh, as we look outside, the weather's beautiful. The holidays are here. The Jets are in first place. Vibes are high in Winnipeg, in the WST chat, and right here on the program. Just before we bring in Michael Remus, I've got to thank the folks that make this show happen every day throughout the year. Our amazing sponsors, starting with Cool Bet. I did just finish up the lock shop with the Cool Bet boys. We got our picks in. We got a parlay for tonight. We got a couple Christmas offerings for you in the Cool Bet exclusives. You can check that out after Winnipeg Sports Talk over at the Edmonton Sports Talk channel. We'll get back to the lock shop when Dusty's back from the Spengler Cup in 2024. Also want to thank Princess Auto, Modern Man Barbershop, Aquatech, Manitoba Battery and Canadian Club, Sport Manitoba and Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries, Vita Health, Wallace and Wallace, F Apparel, Nick and Nicky DQ, Royal Sports, Boston Pizza, The Jets, and Little Brown Jug. And of course, we will also get to a why not question of the day for our friends at Not Autocorp over at Waverly and McGilvery. Welcome to the gang in the chat. Shout out to everybody listening on podcast. And welcome to you, Michael Remus. What is going on? Yeah, I'm feeling good, Huss. I'm in a festive mood. Uh, the weather's great out uh, we're coming up on a couple days off the player break uh, nfl all weekend and oh yes you said it huss the winnipeg jets in first place in the central and also gabe velarde just uh, showing everyone who at least as of now who are the winners of the big trade in the summer it's really hard to stop mention the fight. yeah stop the fight like <laughs> i think it's i think stop stop the fight because you know, it's really hard to mention how well Gabe Velarde is playing, you know, especially since coming back from injury, Has We've seen him gel with Shifley and Ehlers here. He's got six goals, seven assists, 13 points in 13 games. And you look over in L.A., he just passed Pierre-Luc Dubois' total of 12 points, and he's played 29 games. Really hard not to notice it, and it seems like every time Gabe Velarde gets a point on social media, everyone's just... Uh, putting up a graphic, uh, comparing the two, just like how we used to compare Line A and uh, Dubois all the time. I mean, this, I mean, this tra- this tra- it's like two trades now we're going to be talking about forever. And going from Line A to Dubois now to Velarde plus Ayafalo and and Kupari, who's still skating in a yellow jersey. Um, this trade is really working out for the Jets, and Gabe Velarde provides an element to the top line. That, uh, you know, they didn't really have and just meshes so well with those two players, Shifley and Ehlers. 
It's been amazing. I, I can't wait to have him on a little later on and talk about, you know, what's been happening with that line, um, you know, how he's feeling getting back in on a regular basis after that unfortunate injury that cost him seven weeks earlier on. Um, and just the feeling around the team right now as they continue to roll and, as we mentioned, find themselves in first place. Um, let's get to last night's game um, before we sort of, sort of move on and start talking about this huge tilt with the Bruins tomorrow night, Remo. Um you know, a, another game where the Jets relied on consistent five-on-five um, five play, really carrying the game. Um, you know, the, the first period, it kind of reminded me a little bit of the first period against Montreal where, you know, the Jets were playing fine. There wasn't a lot of big-time scoring chances. Um, I will say this. I thought Lauren Brassois was um, exactly what they needed him to be, making big saves at big times early on to prevent going down. And, you know, for all the beautiful goals we've seen from the likes of Shifley and Ehlers and Velarde, and we certainly saw that a little later on, it was um, back to basics, getting the puck on the net and seeing what happened. And um, it was actually Neil Pionk on a goal that I think many of us thought was Morgan Barron initially that got the Jets on the board in the first period and uh, had that lead going into the dressing room, which was a lot nicer than coming back from 2 nothing deficits as they've been doing consistently for the last few games. Yeah, you know what it was? It was Morgan Barron saw Justin get the OT winner uh, the previous game, and he's like, no, i got to get back on the, on the score sheet here. I can't have my brother scoring in my own arena. I thought it was Barron, but sure, they gave it to Pionk. And you mentioned Lauren Brossois. He got off to the slow start. Now, the sample sizes are, are very small. Us, but you know, in two games in October, eight seven three save percentage, three thirty eight goals against. November three games, two and one record, but eight eighty one save percentage, two sixty nine uh, goals against. And now, I mean, he's gotten even better here in December. Three games, nine fifty one save percentage, one sixty nine goals against. I, I think, I think I said here that give this guy time. He's shown in the past, especially here, he can be a quality goaltender, and he's shown that he's an awesome backup and. You know, if he continues this play, you think that Hellbuck's going to get, you know, they said once a week, maybe they give him a couple more, or, have the, or at least have the confidence to do that because they definitely did not uh, have the confidence in the backup Riddich last year, and they need Hellbuck to be fully rested, us. And we know resting him now in December is going to pay major dividends in April. Well, 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 you know what? And never mind the resting, it's getting the wins right now because then it mm -hmm. gives the team the option to do that later yes. on. I mean, I've gone back to this a number of times and people have sort of banged the drum. Well, you know, he, he played the last 13 games of the season. Well, it's because the Jets were basically in the playoffs mm -hmm. for the last month of the year and they had to go with their number one guy. Hey, listen, people remember, I was very iffy on playing Brassois in that Nashville game earlier on when he had been sort of struggling a little bit earlier this year. And he let in a shaky goal, and the Jets lost that game. Since then, he has been absolutely lights out. And he has done everything that the team has expected of him. I think confidence levels within the coaching staff and the team are sky high. And to be honest, Reem, when you look at the way Brassois has played in recent starts, combined with what Hellebuck is doing, I'm not sure you could look around the National Hockey League anywhere and find a better one-two punch than the Winnipeg Jets have in goal right now. And LB has been a big, big part of that and was, again, a big part of it last night. So, and, and I mean, it kind of speaks to what this entire team is doing right now. Everyone is playing at a high level. Everyone's just doing their job. And it's turning into wins, lots of them. And that's why the Jets are looking down at the rest of their uh, rivals in the Central Division. So, I mean, a great game for Loren Brassois. There were some other guys, and again, we're going to probably end up talking a lot about Filardi in that top line. How about the game that Axel Janssen Fialbi had last night? And, you know, what a season for Axel. He did not start on the club. He was on the Manitoba Moose. He made it through waivers. He came up, and he's played so well that at times when they've made decisions, he's actually been in the lineup over a guy like David Gustafson, who's played very well. I thought the fourth line was awesome last night. Um, but Axel, with that, I mean, how many times this year has he taken one of those wide passes off the boards and just blown by somebody? Um, and then, of course, last night finished it off. Man, there's nothing I like more, Huss, than seeing Axel's long flow while he's skating down the wing. It's just <laughs> gorgeous. And for him to go and rip that puck past James Reimer, who still gives me nightmares 
from last year when he when he shut down the Jets. It was just a great sight to see, and you need scoring from all lines. And you know the top line's been constant, but you know the uh, the Lowry line at you know had their due early, and the Perfetti line before. And nice to see those guys chip in. And I think you like what Axel brings, like to likes his speed and. You know, his penalty killing ability, and there he was getting the Jets on the score sheet and a real dominant 5 2 win uh, yesterday. You know, the one concern we had coming in, we talked so much about the power play, Huss. Well, <laughs> they didn't really, they didn't need it yesterday. It was a strange game in terms of penalties. Uh, the Jets didn't have an opportunity with the man advantage, but they did uh, stop Detroit on their two opportunities. So it was, a, you know, a complete. When thoroughly outplayed, out shooting them 41 28 in shots. Uh, Lauren Brossois playing very well. Um, is a you know, just a, a very clean game all around from the Jets and a really nice bounce back from that game against Montreal, which had that weird first period where there wasn't a lot of room out there. You had uh, Montreal scoring weird goals, but no, the Jets, uh, the Jets bounce back and beat up on an inferior opponent. Well, and, and, and listen, I mean, um, the Wings got that goal early in the second period, and all of a sudden it's a 1-1 game. Uh, mm-hmm. And at that point, the Winnipeg Jets really flexed. Um, you know, they dominated the rest of that period. I believe the shots were 30-15 to 15 at the end of the second, and uh, the Jets had ended up scoring three more times and were sort of running uh, running away with it. Um, you know, it, it, we spent, and we're, we, for obvious reasons, we're spending a lot of time talking about the trade with the Los Angeles Kings that brought Gabriel Velarde and Ajax, Alex Iafallo and Rasmus Kapari and the second round pick from Montreal for Pierre-Luc Dubois, who's struggling in L.A. But Dino Apostolopoulos makes a great point in chat, and especially with Andrew Kopp being here, it is good to notice, as great as the PLD trade is looking right now, Think about how that Andrew Kopp trade looks for the Winnipeg Jets right now. You've got Morgan Barron playing very well and taking a regular shift and being a big part of the Winnipeg Jets' success. Brad Lambert playing very well in the American Hockey League and has a bright future. The Jets' top defense prospect, Elias Salmonson, who we talked to Scott Wheeler about yesterday, who will be playing a big, big role for Team Sweden at the World Junior Hockey Championships and could very well be a Jet next year. And Thomas Millich, the goaltender, who will also be a part of the Winnipeg Jets' future. That trade, we don't spend enough time talking about it right now, Remo, but now a little bit removed from that deadline deal, that one is looking like another Chevy masterpiece as well. Yeah, he's really came out uh, strong on some of these trades lately and everyone mentioning the... The Velarde, the Velarde trade. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing what Elias can bring at the World Juniors. And Billy Hainel continues to skate in a yellow jersey. Oh, sorry. That was just funny. You keep getting the uh, Truba trade and the, and the, the cop, cop trade because no. they're, both, they're both with the Rangers. Baron, yes. Baron Lambert, Salmonson, Millich. Yes. All from the cop trade. And, of course, what Morgan Barron's doing right now on its own, considering... The Rangers got 16 games of Andrew Kopp and three rounds of the playoffs. Part of the brilliance of that trade was making that, you know, if they made it to the conference final, a second rounder turned into a first rounder where they were able to nab Brad Lambert. Um, but a lot of a lot of good things happening and in retrospect making previous moves by the Jets look even better by the where they're playing and the way the prospects are going right now. One other thing last night before we get to a little bit of feedback from the the game last night from the dressing room. Reem and I tweeted this out at the beginning of the of the game. Jets Heritage Blues versus Red Wings Classic Road Whites had to be up there with the best uniform matchups of the entire year in the National Hockey League. Man, those Heritage Blues, I like how they keep incorporating them. I like uh, you know how they change up all the branding and it is original 6 weeks so they will be rocking them against uh, the Bruins. Uh, classic, timeless uniforms, these Jets heritage. They're so well done, and I hope to see them more, but we'll see them uh, again on Friday. So I, I agree with you. I, I love it. And here are a couple notes. We have to also have to get a shout-out to Josh Morrissey, played in the game with his face 
But I just like look at him and I'm in pain. Like, uh, you know, doing the pregame, he had a good sense of humor. You appreciate that. But he was there getting his uh, 23rd assist of the season yesterday, leading the team. He's got a four game point streak. Uh, we do have to give a shout out to the Jets. Hel holding their opponent has three or fewer goals for the 21st consecutive game. It's more than a quarter of a season. Yes. Yeah. Shout out to team defense, uh, team goaltending. As well, 10 games, 7-2-1 and one in their last 10. And then this top line, uh, what more can you say? I mean, Ehlers, five game, or sorry, four game point streak, four goals, five assists. Shifley, three goals, three assists in his past four. And the man who's, uh, I think everyone in Winnipeg, I mean, if you haven't don't have a Velarde jersey now, you're probably rushing uh, to Royal Sports to get one. Uh, so he's the new fan favorite here. Uh, There'll third be some thirteens flying off the shelves uh, <laughs> as we get closer to Christmas Here. for sure. W one goal, two assists yesterday. Third multi-point game of the year. Uh, career high four-game goal streak, and his point streak and goal streaks four games. Listen to this: five goals, five assists in his last four games. That's like two less points than Pierre Luc Dubois' <laughs> season total. In, <laughs> it always comes back in twenty-nine to games. It always goes back to. I'm sorry, uh, Pierre Luc, but it always is going to come back to that uh, for eternity, forever. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Vlari's the hottest player in the league. He will join us if you just jumped in with us. Welcome, everyone that's uh, just popping in a little late. Hit that thumbs up, by the way, if you haven't already, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Um, Dubois got one assist in his last 10 games, and that was that bogus assist where he barely touched the puck to his teammate that scored from behind the net in the corner on probably the flukiest goal we'll see all season long. Um, but again, we're moving on. Some people aren't, and sometimes we're guilty of it too, kind of seeing what's happening. Kings lost last night at home to the Kraken, and uh, another tough one. But the Jets have moved on and haven't looked better in a long, long time than where they are right now. Another win last night. They'll have the Boston Bruins in town tomorrow at Canada Life Center, which should be an incredible atmosphere heading into the holidays. Uh, but let's hear what Bones had to say from last night's win over the Detroit Red Wings. A uh, Rick Bonus in high spirits talking about another strong performance from his team last night. It was just an all-around, really, a really solid team effort. Like, five, our team game, again, I've talked enough about it, but our team game has been really good. And you don't have a team game unless you have everyone contributing and everyone looking the same out there without the puck. And all four lines tonight were going. Uh, the D were good. And, and listen, give LB a lot of credit, too, because I talk a lot about timely goals. Well, that fifth goal was timely, and a lot of timely saves from LB. So that, that was a good, solid team effort. Yeah, Bones pretty happy with what he got from everyone, including the fourth line, who was, I think you could say, was the best jet line in the first period. Um, Axel was flying. David Gustafson had a number of opportunities. And, of course, Morgan Barron was front and center on a goal that ended up being credited to Neil Pionk. Here's what Bones had to say about the fourth line last night. They worked very hard, so we'll give them, you know, you, you want to get rewarded. And it was, you know, it was a great play. It was a great shot by Axel, great play by Dylan Sandberg, and a great pickup by him. And so that line has given us a lot. You want your fourth line to, to, to do exactly what they're doing. They're spending time in the ozone. They're giving us uh, good quality minutes, so it's great for them to get rewarded. What is with the hair? <laughs> Clean it up. <laughs> I like it. All right, I like it. Uh, but talking about the fourth line and a quick seamless transition to ask our pal Murata Tesh about his new haircut, which debuted yesterday on Winnipeg Sports Talk. If you missed it, want to check it out, go back to yesterday's <laughs> show. Hey, shout out to our girl Taylor, one of the OG queens of WST chat with a super chat for the Lardo mm -hmm. content, Hart. Thanks for the fantasy points, Gabe. He's been helping fantasy players, and if you've been on his goal props or his shot props over at Cool Bet the last little bit, it has been uh, it has been paying dividends as well. Yeah, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Les Perot. Came into our YouTube comments yesterday. We writing came here to see what the fuss is about Marat's hair. I guess he was listening to the podcast. Everyone talking about it, including Rick Bonus, who was surprised uh, surprised in the post game and. 
Uh, Derek's asking about time on ice. You mentioned when the Jets have had, you know, their game success, all four lines are rolling. I mean, you look at their fourth line, Barron, 12-09, AJF, 10-47, Gustafson, 12-19. So, is it, like, has this been the first game ever where a player, every player has had over 10 minutes? I mean, how many times has that no. happened? No, it's happened a few times this year, and it's yeah. happened when the Jets have played, you know, well from start to finish. They've often had a lead, and, you know, Rick Bonus has total confidence in playing these guys in all situations. And you, you look at Barron, also played 32 seconds on the PK. Gus had a minute 28. Axel didn't get out in a shorthanded situation, and that's why he was a little bit less. Um, but, I mean, that line had almost 11 minutes at even strength last night and was a big, big part of the victory. I mentioned the PK. Um, PK had a nice game. There was, as we mentioned, no power play opportunities, uh, but the Jets were perfect on the penalty kill. Here's what Bones had to say about the performance of his killers. The most important thing at this point is it is game to game. Like we're not going to be shooting up to number one or number two. So that, that's not even a goal right now. The goal and Scotty had a great meeting with them tonight. So give Scott a lot of credit because they had a really good meeting t tonight prior to the game. And now it is it's just one kill at a time and just go from there. So I thought they did a good job. They've got a lot of talent in that power play. They made some passes and that's where LB made some big saves. But it's it, that's what it is. It's one kill at a time. Talking about wanting those shot blocks, one of them that stands out was Dylan Sandberg on, on the PK. What can you say about his shot blocking efforts? Well, yeah, but you know, when I was, when I said that, like the guys are trying to block shots. It's not like they're getting out of the way. They're they're they're, they're making a good effort to get in the shooting lane. And sometimes the other guy with the puck has a decision to make too. Right, he's getting it by him. So uh, it's not that they weren't trying to get in the lanes. They were, uh, but there's a time to you mean. In big block shot block, and we got it tonight. So from Dylan. So I uh, know the penalty killers did a good job. So in a lot of those times, when you're getting in the shooting lane, you're forcing them to shoot wide. So that's just as good as a shot block. If you're forcing that shooter to put the puck off the side of the net or away from it, then the, the, the guy coming out has done his job. It doesn't register as a shot block, but it makes him move with the puck away where they don't want it to go. All right. So there's Bones on the PK, which was perfect last night. And uh, we'll, um, we'll, we'll wait till after Christmas to resume conversations about the power play, um, which had no opportunities last night, but it didn't matter when the Jets are playing the way they are at five on five. Um, I have to get this clip in. Rick Bonus talked about um, just how good Loren Brassois has been as of late and uh, a few other topics. He looks very calm. You know, totally different from the start of the year. He, like he's again timely saved. Not yet, but I will. Tonight. And he gave him to us. But he's been uh, he's been outstanding for us. Rick, you talk about your defenseman wanting them to get more of the rush. Oh, your first four goals tonight, D men all had a hand um, in, in some fashion in those goals. Had points on them. It was tonight a good example of yeah. of that balance of uh, of them getting up, but not unnecessarily risky unnecessarily and finally we got a goal from them too because our goals for the d have been down but the most important thing is that is that they're joining the rush and they're getting involved uh we had a couple of assists last game like our d have got to be involved with the rush so you need that for you look at their goal tonight the first goal there's a d coming late right so that's a big part of our offense is they're getting our d involved and we also did a good job involving them when we we're cycling the puck in, in their zone, we used a lot. They went low to high a lot, and the D were good and getting shots, uh, pucks down to the net. Early in the game, we weren't getting to the net. As the game went on, we were the forwards doing a much better job getting to the net because the pucks were getting there. All right, there's Rick Bonus last night post game after the Jets did it again and moved back into first place in the Central Division after a 5 2 win over. The Detroit Red Wings tomorrow night, Boston Bruins. What a way to finish off this pre-Christmas portion of the schedule. We'll talk about it and more with Scott Billet coming up. And don't forget, Gabriel Velarde will join us a little later on on today's show, as will Jeff Hamilton. Um, listen, just before we bring in Santa Billick, the holidays are here, gang, and there's a Canadian club for every occasion heading into the holidays. Whatever you're looking for, there's sales on all the Canadian club favorites at your local Manitoba Liquor Marts. Original CC, 100% rye, and Canadian Club Classic 12-year-old. 
And there's also still limited availabilities of the Canadian Club Invitation Series. CC, 15-year-old Sherry Cask. The signature Canadian Club Classic 12-year-old whiskey finished with a secondary aging and Oloroso Sherry Casks. All the hallmarks of Classic Canadian Club with the added richness and sweetness of Sherry. Pick it up today for enjoying over the holidays or as a great gift for a whiskey lover in the family. $79.99 wall supplies last for the Canadian Club Invitation Series and this holiday season and always please enjoy responsibly. Um, I know there's still some last minute shopping to be done. Our friends at Manitoba Battery can save you a heck of a lot of time with just a quick phone call to 783-8787. Check out these last minute Christmas deals at Manitoba Battery. 25 foot booster cables for 60 bucks. Three sets of 12 foot booster cables for 60 bucks. A 2000 amp booster pack for $120 and an ice fishing package that includes a 10 amp lithium battery and charger for 120 bucks and of course gift cards as well. And with any purchase from Manitoba Battery, they'll deliver it to you for free anywhere inside the perimeter of Winnipeg. It's just that easy. So uh, give them a phone call, 204-783-8787. You can go to manitobabattery.com and knock two or three gifts off your list in a couple minutes. It's that simple. And gifts for Manitoba Battery, while maybe not the sexiest thing under the tree, probably will come in the most handy for the people to get them throughout the Winnipeg winter. Um, speaking of the holidays, I know a lot of people want maybe a last minute cut looking good for your gatherings and whatnot. Well, you better get down to one of the eight modern man barber shops in Winnipeg, including their newest locations on Pemina Highway or Plessy Road. Modern man's got you covered, guys, with haircuts, beard shaping, shaves, color services, and more. Book your look via modernmanbarber.com. And as we look into 2024, if you're thinking about improving your home, our friends at Aquatech have you covered. Maybe thinking about a sauna or a spa or full home renovations. It all starts with Aquatech. With thousands of rentals as their foundation, let them upgrade any space in your home. If you're ready to enhance your kitchen, bathroom, or even add a man cave to your home, visit aquatech.ca to learn more about their whole home renovations, including financing options. All right. The festive theme continues because... <laughs> Santa Billick and his little elf, Phoebe, now join us from the Winnipeg Sun and the North Pole. Billick, uh, best of the season to you both. I was going to say you were talking about sexy tree, and it doesn't get much sexier than this look. So uh, The bar's pretty low, Huss. I'll, I'll just say the bar is low, but uh, I, I saw that the chat was calling for Phoebe, so there she The is. chat, of course, is calling for Phoebe, and, and podcast listeners, this is another reason, especially today, why you might want to jump on, much like la- yesterday, watch, to man. check out Marat's new haircut, because Billick is rocking a beautiful Christmas jumper, a uh, a very festive white hat that could potentially be on Santa, and his cute little dog <laughs> is just patiently sitting there chilling, charming no, no. all of our viewers here on WST. Um, Scotty, let's get to the game last night. Another yeah. just great 60 minutes, everyone chipping in, workmanlike, dominating at five on five. I mean, uh, this is something we've said over and over again, but that's a very good sign with a team that's now in first place. My dog just ruined my outfit here. Holy smokes. Shush. One second. Hope yes. they didn't soil, soil on you. No, no, no. Uh, well, that would be a first actually. That's never happened. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, the Jets saw a wounded animal last night and they did the responsible thing. Huss. They put it down. Right. I mean, that's that's what you do when you find a wounded animal. You got to you got to put it down. And, and, you know, we've seen this in 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 years past where, you know, teams that have come in. It's almost been a launching pad for those teams that have struggled. Right. And and and, and those teams have found some success against this Jets team. Um, that's just wasn't the case last night. The Jets put the boots to, to Detroit. And any time Detroit tried to get back into that game, uh, the Jets just shut them down, right? They shut the door after um, after the Kane goal. They shut the door after the first goal that, that, that Detroit scored as, as well. Um, and Brissois was fantastic. You know, I, th- I think the one thing that that's really evident about this Jets team above and 
beyond all four lines clicking, all that sort of thing, um, is how well this goaltending kind of tandem has has come together now. Um, you know, we spoke a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago now, about how maybe this team, you know, it just the goaltending was struggling. But you know, you look at this team, and you know, they say it takes three three things to be successful in in, in hockey. It's 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 obviously defense. Um, goaltending and 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 so the Jets have those things right I mean this is a team that that's yeah I mean I, I don't really know like we're you know we're 31 games in those 32 games 31 games in this season and and we're struggling to find more to say about how good they've been and and the thing is to us like they can get better because there's still I mean obviously the PK was two for two last night we didn't get to see the the minor switch uh made on the power play but i mean there's another level for this team to reach and that that's a good thing 31 games into the season this team hasn't peaked yet uh right like this team this team has another another gear to gear to go into and and so we'll see we'll see where where that takes them because there's still potential in this team to get a lot better and they're already first place in the central division as of this morning no, it's a great point. And hey, shout out to Tico J and Chad. Keep up the great work, boys. Been listening to WST for years. Always look forward to the show every day. Thanks again from Alberta. Go Jets, go. Yeah, the Jet fans are coming out from all over the place and joining us right now. And why wouldn't they? It's a very, very fun team to watch and it's a fun team to talk about. Yeah. Um, and listen, I don't think anyone's having more fun right now than Mark Shifley, Nikolai Ehlers, and Gabriel Velarde Scott. Um, we're gonna have Velarde on the program a little later on and talk about his success with that line and the team overall. Um, I think there was a lot of people that were sign- very worried about what would happen to the offense of this team with Kyle Connor being out for an extended period of time. And in a, in a strange, yeah. almost bizarre way, they kind of stumbled or maybe uh, stumbled upon the most effective version of that top line, at least in a very short period of time that we've seen in a long time. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. Well, yeah, I mean, we were talking about how good this line was looking with Ehlers and Connor on that line back before uh, Kyle Connor got injured. And now we're talking about, you know, this this line with Gabe Velarde. And Gabe Velarde's gone, uh, I don't know what you would call it. I mean, he's it, it's it started in L.A., I think. I mean, that was sort of the revenge tour start. And from there, it's gone. I, I think over the last four lines, this team has put up 20, sorry, the last four games, this line has put up 25 points. Gabe Velarde is on a four-game point streak, 10 points in that, five goals in his last four games, four-game goal-scoring streak. It's all going well, right? And, and you watched it last night. It wasn't even – it was kind of a blended line when Cole Perfetti found Velarde in front there for the easy backdoor tap-in. Um, but, yeah, it's just – it's going really well. And, and, you know, this is the thing about this top line. We used to talk about this top line. They were very good at producing and that sort of thing. But, you know, defensively, that, that they weren't that great. If you look at the underlying metrics of this line right now, and even the one with Kyle Connor and Ehlers before it, they're they're limiting chances against. So they're out shooting or out attempting at least their opponents. All all the underlying numbers actually look really good for the top line, and so that's something. Again, you're looking at past years. You're trying to compare. Sometimes these comparisons almost are unfair right now because this team is so much different than it was, and. And yeah, I mean, so we're seeing an evolution of this top line, whether it's with Velarde, whether it's with Kyle Connor, it doesn't really matter. It, it, there's an evolution with this line that, and, I, and honestly, I think Mark Scheifele deserves a ton of credit here because I think Mark Scheifele is driving a lot of this bus right now. And and I'm talking also defensively too. It's not just it's not just him on in the offensive zone anymore. He's back in the defensive zone. There's a lot of buy-in from Mark Scheifele right now, and I think after he signed his eight-year deal, that's something that you would want to see, right? You want to see this guy committed, uh, committed to Rick Bonus's system and all that. This system has really, I think, really shown its true colors this year in terms of how you can play a defense, you can play defense as a top line and still produce wildly uh, in the other in the offensive zone. And, and so these are good things for this line to see. And so I think for Mark Scheife to see, because I think when this team got away from it, in past years, Mark Scheifele got away from it as well. I, you know, I think this team doesn't. There's a there's a certain baseline right now on how they're playing, and they don't drop below that. Like even in the games that they've lost, 
Uh, you know, you don't really think. I mean, you can go back maybe a couple of the early season games, the LA five one loss, one of the Vegas games where there was times where this team kind of kind of lost its structure and was a little lost out there. But that's not the case anymore. Like this team through thirty one games has has really developed a um, yeah very much a baseline and identity like early on that they know that they can fall back on, and they know in games and especially this top line like they'll just keep Mark Shifty said it this morning at practice um, after after practice talking about, you know, how this team, like, they just, they know that they can stick to the game plan and there's a good chance they're going to find a tying goal. There's a good chance that they can overcome a two-goal deficit. And, and there's a good chance that when they're in the lead, they're going to hold that lead. And it's not going to be some of these games that we've seen in the past where where, where they've coughed up leads and, and that sort of thing. Like, there, there's very much a, a, a confidence in in the system that they're playing and 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 that's been so big for this team, and especially I think for this top line because the top line's bought into that system, and it's producing as well as playing well defensively. Well, and, and, and you know what, Scott? I mean, you know, a couple things on that. First of all, you know, to go back when they weren't really in games or weren't, you have to go all the way back to the middle of October to yeah. even find those games. And I think you could go back, particularly in one of the Vegas games. I mean, look at special teams. That was an issue. And obviously that 100%. LA game was the third game of the season. They've been the number yeah. one team in the NHL since the 4th of November and have continued to do it yep. successfully. And to your point about, you know, more attention to detail on defense by the top line, everything that Rick bonus said last year, and even some things that Maurice had said in the past is sort of coming to fruition in that, you know, being better defensively, being in that right spot, being a little bit more committed, not cheating, when you have the speed and the ability to turn it around is creating offense for the Jets. And, and I'll point yeah. out something they had on the Sportsnet broadcast last night that I thought they did a good job of breaking down. I'm not sure we're talking enough about the Jet blue line and how the Jet defensemen, no. one to six, are getting the puck making quick decisions and move it out. And they've been doing that better than we've seen really at any point with the current group that the Jets have and have had had for the majority of the last few seasons. It's not even close. A hundred percent. Like, you know, I think one of the things like, so we talk about a lot about uh, the attendance and why it's taking people some time to get back to this team and, and believe this team. I think that also extends to this defense because I think in years past, We've seen the same defense, and one of the one of the big questions coming into this year was, well, what was going to improve if they weren't going to, you know, change the personnel or make a, a different change on the blue line? And they didn't. But this team, again, I think the and the defense has been a big part of that. It is it is quick. It, it's exactly what you said, right? They get the puck, they move it out of the zone. The breakouts are quick. The transitions are quick. And that's really helping this team just stay out of their zone, right? Like, I mean, one way to battle perhaps, you know, some perceived defensive deficiencies on your blue line is just not play defense a whole lot. And and, and the Jets aren't really doing that a lot. If you look, I mean, one of the things that, that really strikes me about this team, especially their defensive play, and I understand it's a complete team thing, but if you look at it right now, five on five, the Jets lead the league in goals allowed at, at, and, and in a good way at 45. That's better than Boston. It's better than Vancouver. Florida, Los Angeles, like all these teams, 45 goals again. I can't remember the last time this team led the league in the fewest amount of goals. I'll tell you when. Five on five. Never. Like that's a, yeah. Well, I said, that, that's, that's exactly it, right? Never. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's exactly it. They're in the top five right now in high danger goals allowed. And and so, like, we've talked about these in, t in years past where this team has given up so many of those opportunities. They're not doing that. I think they're in the top 11, 10 or 11 right now in, in high danger chances against. So again, those slot shots, the, 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 the grade A opportunities for those that don't really care for the high danger type of terminology, it's all the same. And at the end of the day, this team is just limiting chances again. The shot suppression is really good. So one of the be better parts about this team is that they just limit shots um, in total. I, I, I haven't looked it up, but... Um, yeah, so like we're talking about a team that's that's committed, and so I think what this team and Kevin Sheveldayoff looked at two summers ago when they brought in Nate Schmidt, or three summers ago now, when they brought in Nate Schmidt and brought in Brendan Dillon, this is sort of what they sort of hoped. Obviously, Nate Schmidt's been in all the lineup, but I think the 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 chemistry between 
Brendan Dillon and Neil Pionk, the way that Neil Re- Pionk has rebounded from his, his his poor year last year, um, the way that 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 Nate Schmidt and 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 and, and Dylan Sandberg have really kind of made this pairing. Like it, you know, I get it. You don't want to be paying a, a six defenseman six million dollars, but at the same time, if you're paying him on the third pairing, and he's mentoring Dylan Sandberg, what he's what she's entirely doing. And they never um, get that's scored been on. That's a big thing between two. And they don't get scored on. Uh, you know, what are you going to complain about? Like, I understand, like, you know, the, the the cost, whatever ratio. I'm not a good financial person or numbers or whatever. But the cost benefit here might not be great or whatever in terms of what they're paying Nate Schmidt. But the on ice, uh, the on ice um, product, like, that's all that really matters right now for this team. So you know, I think this team. Given the, the way that them given up the number the fewer goals that they've they've allowed five on five, it really does, and I think it does speak. And and the and the defense doesn't get the credit that you kind of alluded to there. And 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 we're seeing it right now. Like we're seeing pretty good seasons, guys that are still on pace on this team for career years offensively on defense. And and it might not look like it because you don't have. I mean, we're not talking about Josh Morrissey in the same way that we were last year. Um, but there's still guys on this defensive unit right now that are on pace for some career years and that sort of thing, and and the defense is there. So it, it, that always tells me, and I think it tells a lot of people, that they're not sacrificing anything in their own zone to get that done, and the stats back that up. I mean, the numbers don't lie right now. The Jets are one of the best teams at 5-on-5 five five in terms of, of goals allowed and all that stuff. And, yeah, I mean, we're looking at a wagon, right, Huss? Like, yeah, and that's what I this mean... team is right now. I, mean, I don't. I don't know. I like. I mean, I struggle to. You know, <clears throat> you don't want to sound all homerish and stuff like that, and I'm not. But you know, we we've gone through a couple years here where we've covered this team, and it's really been, uh, I would say, negative. It's been bad. There's been, you know, it just it hasn't felt. There hasn't been a good feeling when you go to the rink and even cover this team because it just there's a cloud hanging over it and whatever. That's gone, and like, and, and I know people will say, "Well, there, there, there's people out there, the naysayers, that are waiting for the other shoe to drop, right? They're waiting for you know this team to kind of fall apart, like it did starting around this time last year." But those signs aren't there, Huss. And, and you go to the practices, and whether they win or lose, they're vocal. Like you don't have that that letdown, and so there's just there's so many things that that you're seeing right now. And I've covered this team now for ten seasons. And so, I mean, I like to think I have a little bit of an idea of, you know, what, what a good Jets team looks like when it's going well and what a bad Jets team. And this is a good team that looks like they're a good team, that sounds like they're a good team, that's, that's talking like they're a good team, like that, that, that there has been a cultural shift here. It's well, one thing, uh, we were talking about this at dinner last night, and just one, one little extra thing on this. Like, there's there's a little bit of bombers in this and you know you don't want to talk about you know you know it's totally different right but you 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 look at a little bit of the culture and the way that this team speaks now and that you go to certain guys and they often say the exact same thing you know maybe you know obviously different different ways of you know uh, addressing and that sort of thing but the message is the same um these are good things i mean if you look at the way the bombers are and the way we've talked about and lauded the bombers and and their culture um, you know, I'm not saying that this is the same or a carbon copy, but this team is showing some good signs of what uh, uh, an elite team looks like when they have a uh, or elite culture looks like when they have. A good I team. love I love the point. And I mean, listen, there is some FIFO in this group. Um, we've heard it. From the start. Is. We've heard it from the start of yeah. this year. I mean, and Rick Bonus has made a point of reminding, um, I think, fans and people around the league that everyone here is committed to the team. They want to be here and they're thriving, I think because of it. And one other bomber comparison. And I mean, this is some of the highest praise you can give a team because of the standard that the bombers have set over the last number of years is the jets have set a new standard of what their expectation is night in and night out. And they've stuck to it and it's resulting in the, uh, the wins that have been coming cool. as they have been. Yeah. I would, I would just say one thing I, I think, and I, I've been looking at this all day cause I'm trying to figure out what I'm writing today and, and that sort of thing. If you go back and I have it up here, but if you go back to, I think it was the 15th. So it was about six days ago. I think it was when the jets just got back from the road trip, their first practice and, and Josh Morrissey talked. I would tell, I would, I would literally, you know, I would, I'd say to people go back and, and watch, Josh Morrissey's uh, scrum with the media on December 15th, if you can, on the Jets website. 
is he answers, I think, about four questions in the whole thing. But he's talking, and just listen to what he's saying, um, talking about the culture, talking about people being on the same page in this organization. Um, these are things that I, I had not heard. Like, it's still, I still, I've, I've listened to it a few times now, and I'm still talking about it today, a week away from it. Because I think it really speaks to the, the the mentality and the mindset in this room. So, anyways, I just I, I, would, I would encourage your, your your viewers here to go and watch that again because I, I think it gives you. I think Josh pulled back the curtain a little bit on what this team is trying to do both now and, and kind of looking forward long term. Well, it's been a lot of fun to watch, and uh, you know I, I can't wait for this game tomorrow night. And listen, regardless of what happens tomorrow, yeah. you know who's going to have a very merry Christmas this year is Kevin Sheveldayoff. <laughs> I mean, I still yeah. think about that game on Friday where Nemetsnikov, Niederreiter, Velarde, and I have foul all scored. Yeah. Velarde had two. And then we had Cop in here last night. And I, I'm sorry, this was from earlier. I've been saving it to get to Scott. But shout out to whoever <laughs> put this in. This is the why not question of the day. Answer in the chat, and Scott will answer it here. Sure. What, what's a bigger fleece by Chevy? The Dubois trade with the Kings that brought back Velarde, <laughs> Ayafalo, Kapari, and the Habs' second-round pick. Or the Andrew Kopp trade to the Rangers, which, for 16 games plus the playoffs, netted the Winnipeg Jets, Morgan Barron, Brad Lambert, Elias Salmonson, and Thomas Millich. <laughs> yeah. Which one is more? Yeah. They're both heavily weighted, at least right now, in the Jets' favor. Which one gets your nod? Yeah. as a better deal by Chevy. I mean, I think right now you got to say it's the it's the, the robbery of Rob Blake, right? Like, I mean, I think that's I think that's the one you have to go for because it's having real implications right now of how this team is is playing currently, right? I mean, I I I think that it could I think the pendulum could eventually swing. Um, and, and so I don't want to be on the fence here, so I'm going to say it's the it, it's the LA Kings trade for Velarde. But I think I think you could look, and you know, I don't want to get people too excited and all that. But I think you could look back at both these trades in, in the end, and like I mean, th there's let's say this: th there's a real possibility next season. I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how what the odds would be, but that Elias Sal Al Salmonson could play. Potentially alongside Josh Morrissey next year, um, I, I think they started to plant those roots in preseason and training camp this year. They kept Salamonson around for, for for quite some time. He played quite a bit with Josh Morrissey. Don't know what's going to happen with Dylan Demello. I mean, obviously, I think they would like to re-sign him for sure because he, he provides a um, he, he provides a bit of a, a net um, to allow Salmonson to maybe work his way into the team, but. And then obviously Brad Lambert, um, uh, you know. So the, we're just talking prospects here, but but you know, if we're talking about what has led this team to be where it is right now, um, I, I think you have to go with the LA Kings trade only because Alex Iafalo did a, a really impressive job early on, covering off for for, um, for for Gabe Velarde when he was injured. Now we're seeing what Gabe Velarde looks like healthy and 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 really just right back where he needs to be and and, and playing on a top line. So. You know, I think the one thing we thought about going into the season with Velarde was where is he going to play and all that. And, you know, maybe he was going to be the second line center or he would, you know, he could play with Perfetti on the second line and Perfetti be the center. We're seeing what he looks like on the top line in the NHL. And it's, uh, I mean, it, it, I mean, the results speak for themselves. It's quite impressive right now. So, yeah, I mean, I think if I have to pick, it, it's certainly the, the Los Angeles trade right now. And, and I, I think, I mean, <laughs> You got to look at the fact that Gabe Velarde has as many points as Pierre Luc Dubois in 15 fewer games. Oh, right I hadn't now, noticed that also, at all. So, yeah, Sorry, so, I'll, I'll, have, I'll have to check the yeah. notes. I hadn't seen anyone reference so, that at all so, on uh, my Twitter feed. But you know, and I think I, you know, so like I, I don't think Andrew Kopp in the end wanted to leave Winnipeg, uh, and I and I believe and I, I believe and I've talked to him about this. Like I don't think he wanted to leave Winnipeg, but just at the time the numbers didn't work and they couldn't give him what he wanted and all that. We knew that Pierre Luc Dubois didn't want to be here, right? And so the Jets have now traded off a guy who they traded their second overall pick for at one point, Patrick Line. Now they've gotten guys who, I mean, you know, maybe we'll see in the end whether these guys want to be here long term, especially the Velardis and all that, because I still think you know that question needs to be answered in the future to 
and that's how we'll know if this team won the trade or not or whatever and see where you know Dubois ends up and all that. But at the end of the day, right now, I mean, this team is playing way better than it ever did with Pierre Dubois in the lineup. So, I, you know, I, I think I, the, you know, I can't day, disagree fans with are happy you. with that. And I, I, right, can, I mean, it's just I can't yeah. disagree with you. And I'm looking at the chat, and it's not. Um, <clears> listen, <throat> there are some people on the cop, and who knows? I mean, if someone son turns into yeah. a top pairing defenseman yeah. long term for the Jets, and Brad Lambert's a top six player, the yeah. answer to this question might be different if we do another why not question of the day for not autocorp like in two or three years maybe the answer is different well, you know but for a team three. that said hey third option yeah well yeah. for a for a team that so said like that a hey B, right we believe yeah. in this group we intend on competing and contending for a cup which a lot of people laughed at this trade yeah. certainly right now far more impactful but at the end of the day yeah they both look really, really good. Scotty, before we go, what a way yep. to get into the holidays. And the Jets have run a bit of a gauntlet, a couple games against Colorado. You've got the Kings. Yep. Detroit's been a really good team so far this year. Um, but what a test tomorrow against uh, a team that's been at the top of the standings pretty much all season long. The Boston Bruins on a Friday night heading into the Christmas weekend. This should be an absolute beauty and another great test for the Winnipeg Jets to show what they're made of and maybe open a few eyes outside of the market. I mean, if you want the gold standard over the last 15 years, let's say maybe, you know, 13 to 15 years of what an NHL locker room culture should look like on what how a team deals with guys out of the lineup, on how a team perennially every season is a contender, you look at the Boston Bruins, right? Because ever since, you know, 2009, 2010, they've been an absolute unit and have been for that. I mean, they've obviously had some of the best players to ever play the game, Bergeron, Chara, guys like that. But they've had – but my point is, like, this team is the epitome of what you would want your 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 locker room to look like, what you want your on-ice play to look like. Um, and so, you know – are the Jets modeling themselves a little bit after that or whatever? I mean, I think it, it, you, it'd be, it would be wrong to say that this team, or it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a far-fetched to say that this team hasn't looked at uh, teams like the Boston Bruins and others that have this sort of very strong culture and the whole FIFO attitude because the Boston Bruins totally have that. You saw what happened to Tyler Sagan there. Um, and, and the Bruins lost Tyler Sagan, and it really didn't really affect them at all in terms of the way they played. Here's another thing about the Boston Bruins. They don't have Bergeron or Krejci this year, and they're still they're still the best team in the Atlantic, Atlantic, one of the best teams in the NHL. Like, like I don't know many teams in the NHL that can lose their top two centers over a summer and not even skip a beat. It's like, crazy. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And so that's that's what the Jets are gonna face. And so, you know, I I I, I think the Jets have have shown now that they can play with the elite teams. They, they can they can beat the elite teams in this league. I think if the if I was to look at the schedule, you know, after that, you want to look at some of the toughest tests in this league, the measuring sticks. I think you got to look at Boston. Like Boston is the measuring stick because they've done it for so long, and and and, and there's just they play a game that's so predictable every night, but it's so hard to beat them because they're just so damn good at it, right? And so, yeah, it. it I think tomorrow's game. Uh, yeah, it's going to be. I mean, what a, I, you know, it, it's a Christmas present for fans, right? For anybody who watch or watch hockey, like if both of these teams come out of the gates and and they're playing their best hockey, it's going to be one of the best games of the year. I, no. I, I don't, I don't think that you could, yeah, view it as any other way. I agree. Both teams and are really early on top Christmas of the game present right now. for fans, and uh, I had that one oh. circled on the calendar before the season even started. Just knowing, you know, a lot of people back in town should be a great crowd. The Bruins always bring in a great atmosphere, and um, the home team right now is the one that's making it happen. Scotty, hopefully we'll see you down at the ring yeah, tomorrow. More, yeah, no, I was just going to say one more thing. I know I, I tweeted this last night about the uh, the crowd last night, and like I think you know if people have been on the fence, and I understand there's like financial stuff and all that, and I'm try, I'm not trying to chill for the team either. But this team is worth the price of admission to watch them, right? Like, I mean, I think if the people have been holding out based on performance alone, like this team is a fun watch now. And, and we haven't been able to say that in a few years, right? It, it hasn't. I mean, last year, the first half of the year, you know, it looked good and all that. 
But right now, like we're watching a team that, that's actually fairly dominant in the way that they play the game, but they still score. It's not it's not like the Dallas game where they kind of suffocate you and that sort of thing. And it's a low event, low scoring game. Like this is still a reasonably high event at times, a lot of goals, and you're, you're watching a good team. So, I mean, if it's, people have been on the fence based on performance, I, I, I think you're safe to come back and watch games now because – of how well this team is playing. Oh, listen, everyone is buying in. It is as good, as consistent, mm-hmm. as hardworking, and as fun a team as we've had here in a long, long time. And yep. they're certainly, I think, the most likable version of the Winnipeg Jets for fans oh, yeah. that we've seen <laughs> in a long time. And, you know, we won't point yeah. any fingers, but listen, it's just, it's uh, <laughs> it's all good right now. And what a way to go into the holidays with the Bruins in town tomorrow. Have a great Christmas. Uh, we'll see you at the rink, but if uh, not... Enjoy the weekend, and yep. uh, we'll catch up with you next week heading into the new year. Thanks, Scott. Yep. Merry Christmas, Huss, and, and to the chat as well. Appreciate, yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate that. it, as always. Have There's Scott Billick yep. of the Winnipeg Sun. He's got a neat piece on uh, Rutger. Check that one out, heading into the World Juniors as well. Um, and listen, as Scott mentioned, I mean, this is a big one tomorrow night. I mean, uh, if you have been on the fence and you don't already have plans tomorrow night, may I suggest going to winnipegjets.com slash tickets and uh, – getting a couple for what should be an incredible game. Of course, we do have a game on Sunday or um, on the 30th, which is the day before New Year's Eve, opening up a home and home against the Minnesota Wild. We haven't forgot about the way the season ended against the Wild last year, so that should be quite interesting. And of course, Tampa kicking things off on the 2nd of January. So some great opportunities to come in and see a team that, yes, folks, is in first place and making more believers by the day. Other great gift ideas available through the Jets. Hit the Jets website. Um, but for tickets in particular, jets.com slash tickets. And maybe think about a game pack for the second half of the season for a last-minute Christmas gift. Um, a big thanks to our friends at Vita Health. They've got great prices on natural organic supplements, beauty products, and groceries. And listen, as we get ready for Christmas dinner, as well as Christmas itself, pop by Vita Health and check out they have the largest selection of local products in the city, hands down. Um, And for men, we know we just finished Men's Health Month. It's always important to take care of your health 12 months a year. Pop by and check out Canada's number one line of men's health supplements, Prairie Naturals, available at Vita Health as well. Empowering people to lead healthy lives, six Winnipeg locations online at myvita.ca. Our big happy holidays to the gang at Wallace & Wallace the fencing and overhead door experts since 1946. Well, it's Christmas time. Winter is here. It hasn't been too bad yet, but we know what's coming. And your garage door is about to work a whole lot harder because winter puts much more stress on a garage door. The right time to prevent downtime this winter is now. Give Wallace & Wallace a call to book your inspection and maintenance service call today for residential and commercial overhead door sales and service. There's only one name, or two you need to know, and that is Wallace and Wallace. And hey, speaking of happy holidays, and get ready for a big week next week, shout out to Andrew, Alex, and the gang at F Apparel. Keeping Winnipeg men looking great with their custom suits beginning at 400 bucks, along with chinos, golf pants, custom shirts, both tucked and untucked styles, and an incredible selection of menswear accessories. Gift cards are available right now, just in time for the holidays. Go online, F, that's E-P-H, apparel.com, and pick those up. Or you can head on down to 190 Smith Street. And, fellas, get ready for some big, big Boxing Day deals beginning next week after Christmas. Make sure you check out everything going on at 190 Smith Street. And, again, F Apparel online at E-P-H, apparel.com. All right. Jeff Hamilton coming up a little later on. We'll also check in with our It Takes a Community to Play segment with Sport Manitoba. But right now, let's welcome in the toast of the town, the hottest player in the NHL, Winnipeg Jet forward, Gabriel Velarde. Gabe, uh, I think I know the answer to this, but uh, how are you doing these days? Doing good. Everything's uh, going well, and the team's uh, having a lot of success right now, and we just uh, we got to keep it going. Well, listen, we, right we really appreciate you jumping on right now, and uh, – you know, it's it's been so interesting to see, you know, you when we first chatted during training camp, obviously an unfortunate injury, and come back and just absolutely catch fire on this new line. I mean, uh, 
how uh, how much more fun are you having today than you were maybe a couple weeks ago when you were grinding back from that injury and trying to get back in the lineup? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It sucks uh, dealing with any kind of major injury. And uh, obviously it took some time even when I did come back few games that fall where I was, you know, timing and conditioning was off. Um, but now I think things are kind of clicking and obviously we're, we're getting a lot of points, but I think more importantly, the team's playing really well as a, as a whole. And we're obviously having a lot of success, um, but it's still very early in the season. We got to keep it going. So it's, but it's, it's been really fun. You know what? I mean, we could go right to the line of what you guys are doing offensively, but I actually wanted to ask you about what you just mentioned, the team's success and the way this group has been playing really all season at five on five. Um, how would you describe the team's commitment to the defensive structure and how is the success you guys are having maybe reinforcing the things that the coaching staff's trying to instill in the team uh, for 60 minutes every night? Yeah, I think you just said, I think the the defensive zone structure that we have in place has been so solid and everyone's committed. And uh, I think, you know, when things kind of do break down, obviously we have the best goaltender in the world and uh, it helps having that, obviously. But I think uh, our, our structure in place has been uh, very, uh, very helpful and very easy for me to learn coming from a, a different system in L.A. And uh I think uh, that's what's given us uh, the most success is our five-on-five five play because I think our, our special teams needs to improve still. There's a lot of work to be done there, but I think when you can fall back on that five-on-five five play that we've had, it's um, the reason for our success, obviously. You know, and I think it speaks to, you know, these wins and the way the team has come together and that, you know, people like us will spend a lot of time talking about the highlight reel goals and the, like what your line's doing right now. But, I mean, you look at a game like – yesterday against the Detroit Red Wings and everyone's got a piece of these I mean you got a fourth line that's going well we know what Adam Lowry's line did early on I mean um, this is not a team that is just being carried by a few guys even though you guys are having an incredible run of success right now up on line one no you said it we're extremely deep you look at our roster it's uh, incredible guys can shuffle in and out guys that uh, are on third and fourth line could easily be on the first line uh, on different nights with injuries and, and stuff like that um, so I think, uh, when you have such a deep roster, it's, it's hard for other teams to just continue to roll lines. And, uh, that's kind of what we're doing as you're seeing, we're just continuously rolling and, and bringing it to the other team kind of with our, our hard forecheck and our, uh, aggressive style of play. So it's been, uh, it's been fun to watch and be a part of. Well, it, and listen, it's been particularly fun to watch you along with Ehlers and Shifley since you've been put together, what, 10 points in four games. I mean, how would you describe the run that uh, you're on personally along with uh, Nick and Mark? Yeah, things have been uh, obviously going well so far. We're, we're scoring. Um, it's going to be like that every night, obviously. Um, you got to stay patient with it and just keep grinding. And uh, you're playing with two guys like that, for, for me, um, two guys that are extremely smart and such a high hockey IQ out there. Um, it makes things very easy for me. And uh, we all kind of have different uh, different skill sets, I think, that kind of uh, complement each other. You look at our styles of play. So I think that uh, also helps with, with our success. Um, but like I said, I mean, it, it, it's it, any given night. I mean, we're, we're producing right now. Things can change. We just need to continue... Uh, Playing aggressive, and then I think when you're playing aggressive and, and you're working hard, then your instincts kind of take over, and uh, I think that's what's been clicking so far, and we just got to keep uh, going. Uh, I mean, Jet fans are quite familiar with the the, uh, the offensive um, skills of Mark Shifley and certainly Nikolai Ehlers. What, what have you learned about those guys from playing with them and then being teammates with them for the last uh, couple months? Uh, I think with Shife, just how – incredibly smart and intelligent he is out there um he notices every little thing and he'll tell you every little thing on, on what he's seeing and he'll listen to him and be like hey uh, like that's crazy that you noticed that but that makes sense you know I'll, I'll look for that next time um things like that and his puck protection and and how deceptive he is with uh with his eyes just kind of looking guys off um and then i think with with Ehlers, just very uh very fast and uh Similar to Shite, very deceptive, but in a different way. I think he does it more with his speed. Um, but just in, in, incredibly fun guys to play with, and it makes my job uh, 
really easy out there. So it's uh, it's been fun, fun so far. We've seen a, a lot of cool things from the three of you. Um, how about Ehlers last night with the uh, with the kick pass to you from the corner? I did you know that he had that club in his bag? I mean, uh, <laughs> were you expecting the puck at that point? I, I I mean, I was standing there and I was just kind of uh, being a support option, and I saw he had it under his foot. I wasn't sure what he was going to do with it at first, but I, I kind of had a hunch he was going to do that because he kind of held it for like a second almost, and uh, it was just such a smart play by him. He shoulder checked, saw me, and then he. He did that uh, kind of heel kick, and I, right away, like when I when I got the puck, I saw I knew Shaif was there. I knew we were gonna score, and I just pointed the the fly right away because I was like, "Oh, all you!" Like without that play, we weren't scoring. Obviously, uh, it was pretty cool. It was a smart play. Well, there's been a few of those, and you know what? This sort of explosion for your line and and really a great stretch for the team kind of dates back to last Wednesday, which I know is a big game personally for you. Going back to LA, you guys were down two nothing in that game, and then your line broke out two goals from Ehlers you ended up being on from being a part of all five goals when you look back at that game considering the opponent how you came back against a team that doesn't give up leads very often um how important was that win and, and what do you remember about that game and how has it maybe helped you guys continue the uh, the run you've been on this past week yeah um I mean obviously it was end of a road trip we were coming off a tough loss in San Jose a game that we obviously didn't want to lose um but yeah, that night, I mean, we just kept kept coming. I think we had a, a bad first period, and like you said, they were up two nothing. Um, but uh, yeah, that was a that was a huge win for us. Uh, LA is obviously one of the, the best top five teams in the league right now, and they're they're so good defensively, and they're very hard to play against. Very structured team. So for us to come out with a win there was huge for us as a line to obviously produce like that, and huge uh, for the team to get that confidence in and beat one of the, the the best teams in the league and then come back and beat Colorado and another top five team in the league right now. So it's uh it's good. You know, you gotta you gotta beat the best teams if you want to be considered one of the best teams. I think we we had a stretch where we were beating a lot of teams that were kind of more near the bottom of the standings. But for us to go back to back and beat LA and then Colorado, it it definitely uh kind of helps with the the confidence and like telling us like hey we're a top team here too. Like let's believe in ourselves. Gabriel Vlardi with us on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Gabe, uh, what's it like playing for Rick Bonus? Uh, how's it been under Bones for uh, your uh, first stint as a Jet? It's been uh, incredible so far. I, I love him. He's great. He's a very uh, he's a he's a player's coach. I know that's kind of a cliche that a lot of people use, but he's just very uh, easy to talk to. He understands like what you're going through. If he's reached out to me several times through through text and different things. If I'm struggling, if I'm playing good, just kind of. Let me know what he's thinking, and and for me personally, it's something I haven't experienced, and it's been uh, it's been a a blessing kind of for me, and I think it's really helped with with my confidence and just feeling comfortable uh, around the rink, around the facilities, and on the ice, obviously. So I'm really uh, glad he's my coach, and I hope we can keep doing good for him. Obviously, he's never won a cup. That's something that he's talked to us a lot about, and. Uh, that's a long ways away, but I'm, I'm glad he's my coach and want to do good by him. You know, um, you know, we've heard, and it's pretty clear, I mean, the way things are going uh, on the ice right now and hearing from players individually. But as a newer player to this team, I'm interested to get your perspective on what the Winnipeg Jets are like a team off the ice, in the dressing room, uh, away from the cameras and the microphone. We hear a lot about how together this team is, and we've heard family a lot that. And, you know, that can be in a lot of different ways, but... Um, is this a really loose group? I mean, is it all business yeah. all the time? I mean, uh, oh, no, uh, there's uh, a personality of every team. Yeah, yeah. I don't, no, I know what you mean now. I, I say it's a very, it's a bit of both, obviously. There's a certain amount of joking around and looseness that comes with being in a team environment and just being with your brothers on the ice and in the dressing room and hanging out and just having fun. But then there's also a certain seriousness that has to come with being a professional athlete and going out there and expecting to win every night. So I think we have a, a really good balance right now with a lot of guys that are kind of more, like you said, loose and like to joke around. And then there's a few guys that are more serious and it kind of balances each other out. It's kind of like that with every team. But uh, I think here at, uh, it is, uh, it ha I've learned real quickly as a family, like we're out there together and if somebody touches one of, one of your brothers kind of thing. It's like you stick up and we all kind of stand together and, uh, 
been uh, like I said before, it's been fun so far, and uh, I've I've enjoyed my time here, and uh, we're just uh, looking looking ahead. We got to keep going, and we want to keep winning, and um, yeah. Hey, who uh, who are the biggest characters in the dressing room? I mean, if you were uh, if you saw a bunch of guys busting their guts laughing, who's probably responsible for it? <laughs> uh, I don't know. On any given day, it could be anyone. I like Schmitty. I think he's a very funny guy. A lot of uh, good one-liners. Uh, Shife's pretty funny too with his uh, his jokes and how he goes after guys. Um, but everyone's kind of got their own different personality, and uh, it's fun to fun to see. It seemed to be working. Um, it, you know, you I'm sure went against Adam Lowry quite a bit back uh, when you remember the LA Kings when you did play the Winnipeg Jets. Um, what have you seen Adam's game? And and uh, I'm interested in how he's been as a captain, as a new captain, with you being a new member of the team. Yeah. Well, well, first off, I'll say like as a as a person, he's an incredible person. When I first got here and I was hanging out by myself, he reached out and he was first guy to kind of show me around town. He sent me a list of all the restaurants that he thought I should go to. And he, he definitely went out of his way to, to make me feel welcome uh, here being new to Winnipeg, obviously. Um, and then as a player, I think he's, uh, he does like everything while out there. He plays extremely hard every night. You know what you're going to get from him, um, which is great, obviously consistency and uh, he plays hard. And I think he has underrated, uh, skill and, and puck smarts that uh, I think sometimes he doesn't even realize that he that he has. He holds on to pucks sometimes and he makes incredible plays and I think he can do that more often and, and we tell him that. And uh but yeah he's a he's a he's a character player. He plays tough, he plays hard, he's a great penalty killer for us. Um and obviously he's with that third line with him, uh Appy and Nino, they've been incredible all year. Um getting tough assignments, playing against other teams top lines and the playing hard and uh, obviously containing them and, and creating offense off that too. They got a lot of points too. Um, you know, you mentioned uh, Adam helping you with the transition being here to Winnipeg. I mean, we certainly know what's going well on the ice. Uh, um, how's it been off the ice? Are you fully comfortable now uh, here in the peg and as a member of the Winnipeg Jets? Yeah, you know, I am. I am now. Uh, honestly, things have been great. Um, it was definitely a, a change at first getting used to it, but now that I'm kind of in my routine and, my girlfriend's in her routine and we've kind of got that down. I think things have been been great and we like it. I'm from Kingston, Ontario. It's this small town, obviously, and it kind of reminds me of home a lot. So it's uh, it's nice. Uh, the weather's changing a little bit now, starting to get colder. We were expecting it sooner, but it's coming now. And uh, um, got family in town, obviously, for the holidays here. But uh, things I want to pick up and uh, have been great so far. Oh, that's nice. So you got family coming in. You'll uh, be staying in Winnipeg for a few days while the team's off? Yeah, we'll be staying here and uh, just hanging out. Not too sure what we're going to do to fill the time yet, but we'll figure that out. Gabe, I know we're all going to be watching the World Junior Hockey Championships uh, this uh, this year coming up on Boxing Day. Um, you won a gold medal for Canada at the Worlds. Um, what's it like to put that Canadian jersey on and uh, obviously, in your case, um, actually come home with a gold medal representing your country? Yeah. Yeah. Every time you play for Canada, is, uh, it's it's an honor. It's kind of a dream come true, obviously, uh, in a different sense than like obviously playing in the NHL. Um, I played world under 17s. I, I was fortunate enough to win that. And then, like you said, I won world championships. Um, but uh, it's it's cool. You're playing for your country. You're playing against other countries. Uh, the, the best players uh, for your age group or, or for championships, best players in, in the world that are available at that time, obviously. Um, it uh, comes with a different sense of pride and a different uh, meaning to each game, but uh, it's uh, it's really cool. And I think as a Canadian kid, especially, you know, you grow up watching World Juniors, everyone tunes in and it's like, oh, we're home for the holidays. Like, come on over, let's watch the Canada-USA game on New Year's Eve or whatever. And it's, uh, it's a big event. So for all the... The kids that are playing, I mean, hopefully they just kind of have fun with it because at the end of the day, I mean, I'm 24 now and you look back at, at those times and it's like you take it so serious at the time, but it's really just just have fun with it and, and, and enjoy the the atmosphere. Are they, they're in Sweden this year? Where are they? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're in Sweden. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously he's not playing in Canada and for the World Juniors, but uh, it'll still be a great environment, I'm sure, and everyone's going to be rooting for them here in Canada, so I hope they do well, and I'm excited to 
to watch and uh, see these kids play. You mentioned about having fun, Gabe. I had a couple more on the way out that are not really hockey related. One is, I guess, adjacent because we've heard a lot of the Macarena this week as you've been scoring at home with the personalized goal songs. You mentioned it wasn't one of your buddies that gave you the idea back at home. You certainly got the assignment. It is a song that everyone knows, that everyone's into. How did that conversation go and how did he drop? You got to have the Macarena and uh, obviously fans are really enjoying it right now. Yeah, no, I'm glad everyone's uh, enjoying it. It was something I kind of talked with a bunch of my friends about. And uh, like you said, it was just like, what's a song that like everyone really knows? And, you know, there's a dance to it. I want to get people up and on their feet when 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 I score. I want people to have fun. So uh, we we were talking and brainstorming for a few days. And then we thought of the, the Macarena because, uh, like you said, it's a song everyone knows. And there's a dance to it. And it's fun. It's catchy. So, uh yeah, glad it's. Uh, I'm glad it's playing finally. It took a little longer than than I thought it would uh, to get playing here, and uh, I'm glad the fans are, are enjoying it. And I hope uh, hope we can hear it a bunch more times, and the team keeps winning. <laughs> yeah, definitely, and they'll have it queued up tomorrow night against the Boston Bruins. Up, uh, Gabe. Well, you mentioned you know you're going to have family in holidays. It's a very strange Christmas schedule because we've got NFL games on Christmas Day. And on Christmas Eve, yeah. Ha, ha, what's the fantasy football situation? Are you still alive in the Jets league? How, how are things going this year? With something that will certainly be on many of our minds the next few days. Yeah, yeah. yeah like I said, I'm I'm in the semifinals here. I got a big matchup against uh, Neil and and Vladdy. I'm with Stan. Uh, we got a good team. I got some big decisions to make coming up with uh, with my flex position. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if I should go with the chain. On the Dolphins there, I got Scary Terry, and then uh, I also got Jalen Warren. So I got to play one of them. I don't know who I'm going to play. But uh, it is kind of weird that they play on Christmas Eve and Christmas. I feel bad for the NFL guys. That kind of sucks. I mean, you want to be with family and, and hanging out. But uh, it's good for us, at least. You know, we get to sit, sit at home and have football on. So it'll be cool. Um, but a big fantasy matchup for me this week. Well, and, and I mean, man, that game on Christmas night, Ravens and Niners, the top two teams in the two game? conferences oh, yeah. going at it. That's the night game. And I mean, everyone, if you're still in the playoffs, is going to have guys from the Niners or Ravens. So there there will be certainly some people that will be somewhat occupied or checking their phones at uh, some Christmas uh, at some Christmas dinners. Um, all in all, though, congratulations on getting to this point. We, we're in the same boat. we got to move on to the finals, survive, survive this exactly, week and yeah. be making some game time decisions. And you know what, just to end off Niners and Ravens, a kind of nice preview of tomorrow night against the Boston Bruins. Um, you guys have been playing as well as anybody in the national hockey league since the beginning of November. We know what Boston's been. Uh, what do you make of one more chance to kind of measure yourselves up against one of the best teams in the league heading into the Christmas break tomorrow night at home? Yeah, you said it's another chance for us to see where we're at. This is uh, they're the be- they're the top team in the East right now. No, yeah, are they the best? Uh, they're right there, them and the Rangers. Yeah, so it's uh, another opportunity for us to go out and play hard and hopefully uh, get another win. Um, every point matters right now. You look at our division; uh, the other teams keep winning too. Dallas is winning. Colorado keeps winning. Even Nashville, they've been uh, really good uh, as of late too. So we need to keep winning too, and uh, it should be. Uh, a good, uh, good game tomorrow and good measuring stick for us. Hopefully we uh, come all ready to play. Gabe, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, we're loving here in the Macarena. It's been a lot of fun seeing what you and your line and the team is doing right now. Good luck tomorrow against the Boston Bruins. Have a wonderful holiday with your family and continued success into the new year with the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. You have a great holiday with your family as well. All right, big thanks to uh, Gabe for popping on and, of course, uh, our uh, pals over at the Winnipeg Jets for setting that up. A great crowd in here, gang. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. We're here every day, Monday to Friday, 1 p.m. Central, live on YouTube. And make sure to, wherever you get your favorite podcasts, subscribe to Winnipeg Sports Talk. And uh, the audio version will be in your feed just in time for your drive home from work right after we finish the show in and around 3.30 every day. Um, That was a lot of fun. We go from uh, a Jet favorite to a WST favorite. The Hammer's coming up in just a second. Uh, But I do want to wish a very happy holidays and thanks to our friends at Princess Auto 
And of course, Princess Auto, Winnipeg made, has the best deals on the most unique assortment of tools and equipment around everything you need to complete the projects on your list or start something new is at Princess Auto. Some great gift ideas, even a gift card for Princess Auto guys will be their favorite gift under the tree this year. You can pop by and see them in person on Panet Road, Portage Avenue West. Shop online 24-7, 365, and make sure to pay attention for some great Boxing Day deals next week at Princess Auto. Um, I know there probably is still a few of you that do not have everyone on your list taken care of yet. And may I suggest, if they are Jet fans or sports fans in general, you can take care of all of it with one trip to Royal Sports at 750 Pemina Highway. The biggest and best selection of licensed merchandise anywhere, period, including a jet section with thousands, literally thousands of pieces of Winnipeg Jets merchandise, pretty much anything you can think of, as well as all the jerseys customized with your favorite players waiting for you. But it's not just Jets. Tons of bomber gear. Uh, many exclusives that you won't find anywhere else. NFL, Major League Baseball, Raptors and NBA, international soccer, the biggest hockey section in town, as well as skates for people that just want to get out on the river or uh, learn to skate. And, of course, some other great gift ideas on the Kings skate, snow, and surf side, especially in their amazing Yeti section. Um, get on down there. Royal Sports will be open right up until Christmas and make sure to pay attention as well next week for great deals at Royal. You can follow them on Instagram at Royal Sports Pemina for all the sale information, merchandise drops, as well as some last minute holiday gift ideas and pop down and see them at 750 Pemina Highway. And we got some football tonight. Big game in the NFC for Thursday night football. Rams and and Saints. We'll get to that a little later on in the Cool Bet lines, but if you're thinking about getting together for a few holiday bevies and watching the game, no better place to do that than your local Boston Pizza. Monday Night Football, Thursday Night Football, win great prizes at your local BP and enjoy ice-cold schooners, world-famous BP wings, gourmet pizzas, and all some great new treats on the BP appetizer menu. And of course, if you are staying at home, you can always get the great taste of Boston Pizza by ordering online at bostonpizza.com. All right, let's welcome in our good friend, normally, but my opponent in the semifinals of the Winnipeg Media Fantasy oh. Football League, Jeff Hamilton of the Winnipeg Free Press Hammer. Happy holidays. But um, I know we'll be thinking about some other things other than turkey and presents coming up this weekend. How, how are you? Where's your headspace going into this grudge match? Hustler, well, I'm feeling great because... Uh, a couple of reasons. I feel like my team is significantly better than yours, so that always gives, you know, always gives you that confidence. Got to be confident in your squad. Yeah, totally. I'm feeling way more confident health-wise than I was earlier in this week. I, as your as your listeners would know, I had COVID like a week and a half ago. Well, this week I was dealing with the flu. So, for those who, um, you know, might have been missing me on Monday, which is I I, I, I say that tongue in cheek. I'm sure nobody was to have to follow up have to follow up Scott Billick, which I'm sure is a weekly role play. We just happened to catch the Xmas theme to, to today, followed by one of the, you know, if not the hottest jet and Gabriel Velarde to have to, to have to talk after that. I mean, I know what you did, man. You did this on purpose. You brought me in for this, for this moment right now to follow up two two, two big hits and Hey, well played, but I'll, I'll get my revenge this weekend. Well, we will see. We have a side bet on the season. The finals are at stake. Um, well, win or lose, listeners of WST will know how this one turned out um, next week. Um, listen, I want to talk bomber news with you before we're done, but uh, quickly, we're now 31 games in. As we speak today, the Winnipeg Jets are in first place in the Central Division. They've been the best team in the NHL since the 4th of November. Um, thoughts on what we're seeing night in and night out from Rick Bonus's team heading into an unbelievable tilt heading into Christmas with the Bruins here tomorrow night. I think we're just seeing a bunch of things going right. I mean, you know, whether you want to classify that as we're seeing the full potential of this team, right? I mean, a lot of the years we've, a lot of the previous years, we've we've often talked about, you know, this team being pretty good on paper. You know, I'll, I recall, you know, a Blake Wheeler comment where, what was it? Two, was it after the summer of, of, of Chevy, the, the year that they signed, you know, Nate Schmidt and obviously Brendan Dillon that, you had Blake Wheeler kind of sitting there, standing up in, in training camp and being like, whoa, 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 we won nothing. I think it was, a, you know, I think there was a lot of, 
a lot of uh, you know a lot of fanfare, a lot of you know certainly a lot of noise from media, a lot of positive noise that this team was you know good on paper. So I think we've been really waiting for all this. Now I'm you know I mentioned a guy like Blake Wheeler. You mentioned in a couple segments ago that you didn't want to name anybody. So I, well, we'll move past that. But clearly this locker room is is a is a good place to be. It's a fun place to be, uh, and they're winning. And I mean you look at what they're doing right. Uh, you look at their five on five play, you know, their their depth in at forward and at defense now and and, and depth that I'm I'm sure they're gonna have to add, you know, to this season to be even a better team than we than what we're watching. But uh, you know, I think they're getting everything out of it, whether it's a, a rebound year from Neil Peon, whether it's, you know, some some great absolute play from from Mark Shifley who who's leading the way, whether it's the, you know, the fruits of the trade over over the over the off season with, with obviously Velarde, who you were just talking with and, and what he's been able to do since coming back. Um, you know, Alex, I follow, you know, Billick mentioned in his, in, in his interview, you know, he, he was picking up the slack earlier on. You have, you have great play in Nino Nito rider. You just have, I think what, what, you know, you've great goaltending in Connor Hellebuck and Laurent Brassois. You have all the ingredients uh, to make a great team. And, and I think, again, I think what we're looking at is the, is, is this team at full potential and, and fully disciplined, um, and enjoying the day-to-day work of, of being an NHL player, which I just don't think, you know, was the case in previous years. So, I, you know, I think this is a really exciting time for, for Winnipeg Jets fans. It's, it's not, you know, it doesn't feel like last season where, you know, mid-December they moved into that top spot in the Central. Um, this is a team that certainly has areas still to improve, particularly on special teams. But, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the foundational work, a lot of the, a lot of the scheme has been, been nailed night in and, and, and night out. And, and I think, you know, to echo other people you've talked to, it's just, it looks like they have a blueprint that not only um, is successful, but one everybody is willing to follow night in and night out. Yeah. You know, you, you mentioned the goaltending and, you know, if you look at the first sort of three weeks of the season, um, you know, Hellebach didn't have a great first three or four games. And Lauren Brassois, I thought, was, you know, a little shaky probably for about his first three starts or so. I mean, LB was brilliant last night and has been that over the course of his last three starts. And I really thought the turning point for him was that game against the Carolina Hurricanes where um, he made, I can't remember how many saves, but it was into the 40s, I believe. Big win for Winnipeg. And he is just built on that, of course. Um, you know, played in, um, you know, played on the road and then came back with a performance last night to hold the team in. And Hellebuck has been, Hellebuck has been great, but what's different, it seems, is that he hasn't had to be like Hasek like I mean, uh, you know, completely stoning guys and having, basically having us talk for 30 minutes after every game about a laundry list of ridiculous chances the team gave up and he made the saves. And with those guys playing the way they are, and Hellebach at a Vesna trophy level without a doubt, mm. you could make an argument that that's as good of a one-two punch in net anywhere else in the league. But with the team in front of it, Jeff, that's playing shift after shift with the commitment to defense that Rick Bonus has instilled and gotten out of his team, I mean, that is the recipe for success and sustained success, as we've seen now, going on just about two months. 21 games with three goals or less. Yeah, this is exactly what Rick Bonus envisioned or hoped for last season. Now, you know, whether or not he thought he was going to get it in his first year here, I think, you know, there's a, a reason the team looks vastly different. I, You know, his input is an important one in, into – um, what he feels he needs to deliver the system he believes that this team would be successful under. And we saw we saw glimpses of it last year. We saw glimpses of it, um, you know, in the first half of the season, again, where the Jets were were able to weather some, you know, weather some storms in games um, and, and be atop the Central Division heading into Christmas. The big difference was, and to your point, Haas, about the goaltending and, and particularly Connor Hellebuck and what he's had to do this season, it's vastly different than last year. Last year, it was the goaltending that was stealing games. Even even David Riddick had a good start to the season last year. Um, you know, was able to get a couple wins in in, in that run. Um, but it was really it was really the goaltending effort that was that was carrying a lot of the weight in that success. And I think that's why, even though they were doing well, you could be a, you could be a little bit more critical than you than you can be with this team because of how they were they were doing games you know how were they were playing games you know I'll steal that snake charmer offense that you know our, our buddy and, and colleague Sean Reynolds likes to use I think that was it was almost cheating for offense because of the way your goaltenders were playing well you know look at look look and Rick Bonus said at the beginning of the last season he doesn't want 
Connor Hellebuck to be that busy. And, and, you know, we would be asking him after week two, week three, week four, and, you know, first few months of the season, like, is this still pretty too busy? Uh, you know, this is a lot busier, I imagine, than you, than, than you thought Connor Hellebuck should be. And, and, and he would constantly say, yeah, and Yep, and, and and that's why I think he was significantly more critical in in the Jets uh, game through the first half of last season. So you you know you fast forward to to what you're seeing now, and now you have a commitment to that defensive you know style of the game. What is that? Twenty one straight games now with three or three or fewer goals. That I mean I don't know what speaks more to defensive commitment than than that right there. And so when you have that defensive commitment, and when we say defensive commitment, we're not just talking about you know, the, the, the back six, we're talking about the offense, we're talking about, um, you know, the role of the centerman and the first man back and being able to fulfill that that responsibility and, and to break out, as we've seen the Jets do in most games, that it's that kind of style of hockey, it's that commitment to defensive play that's allowing Connor Hellebuck to be the goalie um, that we all know that he is and and, will, and to be the goalie um, for, for a lot longer throughout the season and into the playoffs. I think, you know, we talked a lot of, you talked to, to, to Billick about, um, you know about the idea of, of his workload and and uh, you know how much how, how much he can play and and you know uh, how much they have to lean on him and whatnot. That I think that was a lot more in previous seasons for sure. But it was it wasn't just the number of games that he was playing in. It was the amount of work that he was getting in those games. I'm still not saying he's not getting any work in these games or that he isn't you know making big saves at big moments. But I think the burden on him is significantly less, and that should help not just the physical toll, but the mental toll throughout the season for Connor Hellebuck and certainly, uh, you know, have him playing his best hockey as the season goes on. Yeah. And then there's the guy we just talked to Gabriel Velarde, along with Shifley and with Ehlers. And mm. listen, I, I got get it. I mean, I was right there with a lot of people going, geez, what the heck do they do with Kyle Connor out of the lineup for a long time? Um, if anything, they've stumbled onto a, a version of the top line that rivals anything that we've seen before. And again, we're talking about a small sample size, but holy smokes, is that group looking good? And Gabriel Velarde, never mind what's happening or what's not happening with our old pal PL in LA. Yeah. Um, he's making that trade look better and better. And every one of those guys that's come over from the Kings has had big impacts, less so Rasmus Kapari, but I thought he had a nice start to the season. But I have Fallow and Velarde especially. And right now, as you mentioned, Gabriel Velarde's the toast of the town with what he's doing right now. Well, you can you could tell he missed the game, right? I mean, when he was injured. I mean, this was this was a a big season for him. This was gonna be a big season for him, whether he was on the LA Kings or the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, you know, so he you know, he had a, a lot riding into this year. So to go through, you know, a difficult injury like he did early on, you know, that's a tough, that's a tough pill to swallow. That's a tough that's a, a massive wrench in your momentum to the season. And then to come back and then perform the way that he has, I mean, you can tell he's hungry, right? And he has that opportunity. He's, and when, when he's been given that opportunity, he's excelled. I mean, you know, I, don't, I think there was a lot of people with you, Huss, where, where when Kyle Connor went down and, and it didn't look good and it looked like it would be, you know, even longer than, than, than the six to eight weeks that's being projected, you know, I, I think you're right. I think a lot of people were in panic mode this guy was such a hot scorer that he was providing a lot of the offense and was certainly helping that number one line click. You know, what were they going to do, you know, with Velarde now coming back? Well, here we go. We have a guy who, who brings a different element to the game than a Kyle Connor, um, but, but, but brings an element that, that works super well with a guy like Nikolai Ehlers and Mark Shifley. I mean, we talked about Mark Shifley and him playing his game. I mean, you can make the argument this is really the first year that Mark Shifley has made his wingers significantly better. And I think the way that Mark Shifley is bringing out the best of, of Gabriel Velarde. I mean, Velarde just said it. You know, he notices things that clearly Gabe Velarde in the average, and I'm not calling Gabe Velarde an average NHLer, but an average NHLer would not notice. And so he's bringing that intel. You have a guy like Nikolai Ehlers who creates things uh, in a different way with his speed. So you're always going to have players – that are, are, are going to have to cheat to, to Nikolai Ehlers or risk being beat by that by that blistering speed. And I just think those two things open up such a game for Gabriel, Gabriel Velarde, who is, who, is, who is not afraid to go in all areas of the ice, who has some obviously great hands around the net and finish around the net, but is also willing to go get the puck and fight for the puck. And I think that element to that line has been critical, that you have three guys that all – like to have the puck, um, but all know how to work off one another. And, and when you can get that combination, um, it's a pretty scary, as we're, as we're witnessing, a pretty scary combination. And it makes, it makes, uh, uh, makes for an interesting situation here for when 
Kyle Connor does come back, you know, where does he come back? Does he come back to that first line and break up what has been, you know, a really, really good line? Or, or does he add a lethal piece to a second line with a, you know, with a, with a Cole Perfetti, right? I mean, I, I think that could be a, a dangerous thing. And then when you factor in the potential of the Jets, uh, you know, building or, or adding to their roster this season, whether it be before the trade deadline or at the trade deadline, I think, you, you know, you start playing – you start playing a little bit of, uh, you know, armchair GM, and it, it becomes a pretty exciting ex- exercise to see what those 12 forwards look like. Well, it should be an interesting one tomorrow, and hopefully a great crowd. I mean, uh, you mm-hmm. know, that has been kind of improving from the start of the year, uh, but I'm not sure whether you could set up a better way to go into Christmas than a Friday night game heading into the weekend with um, the Boston Bruins in town. And, you know, it's funny. We think of the Boston Bruins as, you know, in a lot of ways sort of the measuring stick in the league for the last couple seasons. And it's still amazing what they've done this year considering what they lost in the offseason. Um, but, I mean, the Jets come in, hottest team since November 4th. There's more than just November 4th to this season, but just three points back of Boston. And I will say this, Jeff, um, you know, they've passed the test against the Kings recently against the Avalanche. You know, you look back to earlier on in the season where they lost two to the Vegas Golden Knights. They lost two to Dallas. This is just uh, another of the uh, tests of the Winnipeg Jets, and we just heard from Gabriel Velarde. I think this team is very much up for it, and uh, what a way to get into the holidays tomorrow night downtown. Well, and to steal another, you know, sentence from him, if you want to be the best team in the NHL, you have to beat the best teams in the NHL, and you know, I, I also, you know, he also mentioned that they were, they went through a run there. They were beating, you know, lesser teams, if you will, or at least teams, you know, below them in the standings. And that's an important trademark of a good team as well. You got to beat those teams too. I mean, anybody who bets on the NHL or knows anything about the NHL or watches games on a nightly basis, good teams lose to bad teams every single night. Like, it's just a fact Like you, that's why it's so impossible and, and difficult to pick winners in the NHL because of such a long season and so many factors that go into it. And, and the fact that while parody is certainly that, you know, there's, there's lots of parody in the, you know, in the league, there's a lot of, you know, there's teams that can beat anybody at any point. And so, um, but it really comes down to those big victories. I mean, you look at, you were making comparables with the bombers. Uh, I think with your, in the interview with Bill, like I'll, I'll add another one. I mean, there's, there are certain games that, the Bombers look back on, you know, mind you, it's an 18 game season versus an 82 game season, but it's, it, 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 there's still some, there's still some value to this. They look back on those big wins, that big, you know, that, that, that comeback win over the Edmonton Elks. They talked about that victory. They talked about the big win in BC victories that weren't really talked about, you know, openly week to week that kind of came out in the playoffs. And then in the great cup where the belief started to happen, where the, you know, they really felt like they turned a corner and it's, it's those victories, whether it's, you know, Florida earlier in the year, whether it's victories over LA, whether it's victories over Colorado, whether it's a victory over Boston, that again, just adds to that confidence um, and knowing and that trust in each other and, and that, and that confidence, man, whether it's in life, whether it's in hockey, whatever it is, is the most important thing you can have. Because if you show up to the rink feeling confident, it's not just because, you know, you won a few games. Um, that confidence comes from being prepared, from being put in a position from your coaches to succeed and to actually see that success play out. And we're witnessing that right now with the Winnipeg Jets. So it, to me, it's, it, it's very clear that this team is, you know, this team has a, a really exciting way to go into the Christmas holidays, but more so a real big opportunity to, to beat a team that's, you know, coming into your barn, who's who's going to be giving you the respect that you deserve because of where you are in the standings. And then for you to go to battle with them for three periods and, and, and come out on top. I mean, that's a special feeling for players. That's a special feeling for fans. And it's even more special feeling when it's against a good team that you know is going to come and bring it, you know, as they head out on their, their holiday break too. Well, it should be a good one. And you know what? I want to give a shout out to uh, to a, a listener, Dan Howard, um, who I actually met at the Great Cup. And he pulled me aside and said, you know, he enjoys the show. And he heard me talking about, you know, the attendance early on and where the team was going and, you know, trying to get some more people back in the rink. And he'd said, you know, I listened to that. It resonated with me. I bought another pair of season t- I bought a pair of season tickets. And he's doing the Christmas party uh, for their company at the game tomorrow night. 
So they'll all be up there in 309 packing them in. So um, as I say, there's no better place in the city to be tomorrow night than Canada Life Centre if you can make it. We'd love to see that thing packed heading into the holidays with the Bruins here. Jeff, we cannot forget to quickly hit on the Bombers because Kyle Walters has been busy wrapping presents for Blue Bomber fans. Mm -hmm. um, but just quickly go over some of the re-signings. I mean, Willie J early on. Dietrich Nichols now, Patty Newfeld back. Um, yeah. I imagine we'll be hearing over the course, of, and that, that's just to name a few, some of the more prominent players. Um, DC is going to have a release or two for us every couple days for the next few weeks as we get closer to free agency. Sorry, Hoss, that was my perfect. Me and Remo were trying to yeah. were trying to group up so I could take a glass of water and dive Sorry, deep into that this was on one. Me. But, that was but on I thought me. you were going to hang on a little bit as the pro you were, and then you helped me on a, on a cliffhanger. But here we go. I didn't go. realize it. So that was I on think, me. You, no, no worries. I think you know. I think what's interesting here, Hoss, is, is is not just you know the big names. Obviously, you look at you look at Willie Jefferson. You know, you mentioned you know Patty Newfell, which is a which is a huge piece to the offensive line, an offensive line that doesn't have anybody else under contract, uh, you know, starting under contract yet. Um, you know, you look at, obviously you look at Dietrich Nichols, you know, he's, he was, he's a two time all-star in three seasons. And the only reason why he wasn't an all-star last season is because nobody threw to him. And so he didn't have the stats to get that, <laughs> exactly. to get that, you know, but I mean, he's, he's argued, he's not, a, he's not just one of the best defensive backs in the CFL he's arguably the best defensive player on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So to get him back is a massive piece. But I, I, I mentioned all, you know, I hype all those guys up, but there's other guys, you know, like the, the you know, the, the Cranby signing, right? The Red Hot Cranby signing. He's a, he's a big piece of the puzzle. You know, he's a guy that, he's a guy that the team, that the team relies on. He, he's a great player. He made that, you know, amazing play. Uh, in in the BC game where he actually there was a couple different plays. One was a non tackle that he did, so it would you know so the time would run out, so they'd go into overtime. He's a really smart player. He's a Mike O'Shea player, you know. And and same thing with Tanner Cadwallader, another another big piece of 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 special teams. You know, a guy who a guy who can chip in and whose roles is likely to grow with this team. So you know, as much as it's the big names, you know, there's certainly some certainly some you know maybe lesser celebrated or, or, you know, lesser recognized names, but still key, key pieces. And I'm wondering too, that, you know, we usually see these, these deals done in December, right? Because it can go on to the 2023 salary cap. So I'm wondering just how much money that the Bombers had to play with here. And if they were able to get a lot of these deals done under the 2023 salary cap and not the 2024, we'll see We'll have to get clarification on on that, but if that's the case, that's a that's a handful of good names and some familiar names. You know, Willie Jefferson's been a guy who's signed right away. Patty Newfeld, another guy who signed right away. So if they can get those those kind of deals under the the twenty twenty three cap, that would be that would be really good for uh, for trying to service the twenty twenty four team because the reality is, Haas, is there's a lot of names out there, man. And I mean, and there's a lot of guys that are going to be, and I think this is the difference between last offseason and this offseason. Now, I'm not suggesting that there's going to be a bunch of guys chasing paychecks or chasing money um, because I think that a lot of these guys do understand what they have here and not just from a player, you know, you know, not from a, you know, a team that you know if they stick together is going to be a team that makes the playoffs and what comes with that, you know, obviously the playoff money and, and you know, those things that you can't necessarily get or promise in, 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 on other teams. But you get a lot of stuff from being a Winnipeg Blue Bomber. You know, you know, if you have a family uh, on this team, I mean, there's team dinners, there's there's meals all the time. There's there's a, there's a great community here, a great support system here, and you can't uh, you know you you can't make light of those things. These are uh, these are big things. So I'm expecting a lot of guys to come back, but there are some guys there that that no doubt are going to warrant you know big pay increases. You know, Dalton Schoen's obviously one of them. You know, Brady Oliveira is another guy. You know, Chris Kolonkowski had a terrific season as a center. Can he keep making the money that he was making, which is essentially a, you know, a rookie deal, um, you know, last couple seasons. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of a lot of pieces to try to figure out here. But, you know, the Bombers are going to have, you know, while they aren't going to have a ton of leverage in the sense of being able to bring everybody back, you know, that's a good place to be. And that will certainly be on the table on their side. No doubt about it. And, of course, we saw Brady uh, O at the game uh, getting mm. the Jet fans fired up the other day. 
Um, you know, he was such a big part of this team this season, a local guy. I'm already seeing a bunch of questions in chat. Are we hearing any, anything on him? And while we're talking about Brady, I mean, that running game doesn't start without the big boys up front. You mentioned Kolonkowski, but hearing in addition to Oliveira, anything about the futures of uh, big Stanley Bryan and Jamarcus Hardrick? Yeah, I think Jamarcus Hard- Hardrick wants to come back. I think that was made for fairly clear at the end of the season like I don't think he's ready or he's done but but who knows you know you go through an off season maybe you get an opportunity somewhere else outside of football I think those guys are certainly considering year to year you know I had a I had a conversation with Stanley at, at, in Hamilton during Grey Cup week and I said how many more years do you think you're going to be able to pull this off and how do you want to you know how do you want to go out or and, and all those kind of things kind of gave it to him rapid fire and he he said that he's been he's been kind of playing it year to year since the 2020 season was canceled, right? This is a guy who's getting up there in age. He's he's my age. He's in his he's 37, I believe. Um, you know, he's or will be 37 for for next season. Um, that's up there, man. And to play at that level, that he's been playing. I know his teammates believe what they saw from him in 2023 is enough to prove that he's capable of coming back and having not just a good, but a great 2024 campaign. But I think it really is up to him. You know, I, I don't think that he's told the team that he, you know, I don't think he's one of the guys that has told the team that he's hanging it up. Um, You know, they're probably giving him his space and his time and and whatever. I mean, he's got to, you know, Stanley's got to figure out what his next step is, but um, you know, again, I got, he didn't come out for the, he didn't come out for the final, you know, media availability, the locker room wrap up. I'm told that wasn't by design, but you know, you know, he knows he would have gotten those questions for sure. So, you know, it, it's hard to say, you know, he, uh, you know, he took it like everybody else in that locker room. He took it very hard that, that, that loss in the great cup. And, you know, in a way that, you know, I remember seeing him and he, he wasn't anywhere to be seen after the game. I, you know, I, he was, uh, he was in a pretty tough, tough state so you know I don't know if that's enough to, to to be motivation you know to to put in another really really tough off season because it takes a lot to get to that shape right you don't just you don't just hang out all winter and then show up in in spring and, and get ready you know get get physically ready it's a it's a full off season um commitment so we'll see what happens with him but I know there's a lot of teammates that are rooting for him to come back for sure and protecting that blind side of Zach Claris. No doubt about it. Hammer, great stuff as always. Um, hopefully we can catch up next week before the new year. But have a wonderful Christmas and holiday, and may the only coal in your stocking be delivered by me in our <laughs> semifinal of the Winnipeg Media <laughs> Fantasy League on the weekend. Hey, you know what, man? I'm going to take, uh, you know, you're going to go low. I'm going to take it once. I'm, I'm going to go a little higher. I'm going to wish you the best of the luck this weekend. You're going to need it. You know, you're a great guy. You, you, you help me out. You bring me on every single week. We, we, you know, we hash it out. But this weekend, it's a little bit different. And, uh, you know, I'm definitely hoping I feed you your lunch. But at the end of the day, you know, may, may the best man win. And, you know, if it isn't me, then I'd love to see you move on to the finals. And hey, It's all uh, business, never personal. Side. And, of course, we do have our side bet on our season. Business is, is one of the most personal things you can do, Hus. <laughs> one of the most personal things hey, you can do. It always is on WSD. Uh, listen, have a great weekend. Uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch via texting over the course of these next few days thanks for everything buddy yeah same to you and happy holidays to to all the viewers you know i think my regular hits on monday that's christmas we'll figure out when i'm on next but i hope everybody has a safe and happy holidays and uh and nothing but best wishes to everyone no yeah we'll definitely have to make something happen between wednesday to friday next week for one final hit look back at 2023 and look ahead to 2024 have a great one dude thank you you too all right there is jeff hamilton of the winnipeg Free press. Um, you know what? I, we joke about the rivalry going into our fantasy game, and I know a lot of other people have their own wagers or things that are coming down to the NFL season, but we will be able to get together. Cheers, our favorite beer, Little Brown Jug. And uh, I need to head down. I might head down to the brewery and tap room, actually, to stock up for the weekend. But, of course, you can pop by and get great deals on generic lager right now at your local beer store as well. Eight packs of the tall cans, $19.99. Singles are $2.99. Um, generic, just a great, fresh, light beer with the uh, everything you like from a domestic beer, but better, made by our friends at Little Brown Jug. But if you do go down to the brewery and tap room right now in time for the holidays, you can mix and match 
all sorts of little brown jug favorites in cans. If you buy 12, you'll get a free $15 gift card to enjoy pints for yourself at the tap room. It doesn't get any better than that. Check out the amazing Little Brown Jug merchandise line as well. Of course, you can also check that online at littlebrownjug.ca. But uh, happy holidays to our friends at Little Brown Jug. Enjoy it responsibly over the course of the weekend and pick it up wherever they sell great beer. And speaking of Merry Christmas wishes, uh, we got to give it out to Nick and Nikki DQ. And they've been with us since day one of this program back in March of 2021. And they've been taking care of WS Tears with those delicious blizzards great stack burgers and more but around these festive times whether you're having a party whether it's christmas whether it's for new year's or just something cool for the family nick and nikki got you covered with the best in dq ice cream cakes as well pick them up at dq northgate or dq polo park or hit them up on instagram at dq manitoba they'll customize it personalize it however you like with a picture and whatnot for a quick and easy pickup at either of the nick and nikki dqs and don't forget if you're out in niverville they've got the new pita pit there as well they do great catering if you're interested in that hit them up on instagram or x formerly known as twitter at pita pit niverville oh and i do want to give a big Big happy holidays to our friends at Aikens Lake Wilderness Lodge. Looking forward to getting back to Aikens this year. Check out more when you're thinking about 2024 at AikensLake.com for the ultimate in fishing getaways right here in the province of Manitoba. All right, we do have the cool bet lines to get to. A Thursday nighter in the NFL, a big slate in the National Hockey League. We'll do that in a minute. But right now, let's continue our It Takes a Community to Play series brought to you by Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries. All right, today on our It Takes a Community to Play segment for Sport Manitoba, supported by Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries. We're going to find out more about the transition from competing as an athlete to coaching. And it is a pleasure to welcome in Ariella Shimnowski, the coach education coordinator at Sport Manitoba to Winnipeg Sports Talk. Ariella, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks, Andrew. It's awesome to have you on. And, you know, we had a great conversation with the Vlastic Journey last week about, you know, some of the places that coaching can take former athletes. You are a former athlete. Give us your background a little bit before we talk about what you've been doing in the coaching side. Um, tell us about your athletic background. For sure. Um, I was a competitive gymnast for 11 years. I spent my early years at Springer's Gymnastic Center here in Winnipeg. Um, after that, I moved over to Corden Gymnastic Center, and that's where I spent the majority of my gymnastics time. And this is where I made my closest friends and met amazing coaches who would be mentors to me and almost felt like family. So this is where I felt where my community was. And so I spent a long time there competing and training. At some points, I was there four week, four days out of the week. Um, as I did that, I unfortunately suffered an injury on the uneven bars, which happened to happen in front of the entire gym in front of all of my peers and people that I respected. And I felt scared and embarrassed because this happened in front of so many people. And of course, in gymnastics, it's common to have many injuries in the sport. It's, it just comes with it. But unfortunately for this one, this would be the injury that kind of ended off my gymnastics career. Um, so I spoke to a doctor and they told me that it would be best for me to not rejoin gymnastics. Um, they were concerned for my long-term health and what my long-term health would look like if I didn't stop doing gymnastics and what that quality would look like. So it was difficult to hear, of course, and being at the age of, I think I was 16 when this happened, to me, this was the end of the world. I thought my life was over, which is a dramatic statement, but when you're so invested in sport and your success, it's hard to hear that that's going to have to come to an end. I can imagine. And, you know, as a, such a young athlete, but, uh, you know, put so much of your life into the sport. I imagine the coaches that you had during that period were incredibly influential in your life overall but also probably very important in helping you move on from an injury that cost you something that you loved. Oh, for sure. I, I don't think I would be a coach without the coaches that I had. 
uh, they were the ones that encouraged me to get back into my sport because it was devastating to hear that, you know, I wasn't ready to be done with gymnastics. I felt like there was more I could do. And so my coaches really helped me get back into the sport and show that I can give back and not just being an athlete, but in a coaching aspect. And it, I'm grateful to them every day. Well, you're so young when, uh, you know, when you, uh, you had to, to stop competing, um, how long did the process take and how did you end up becoming a coach? So I was in recovery for about three months and it was the longest three months as any athlete knows having to be still and not doing anything is very difficult. So during these three months, all I was trying to figure out was how can I get back into my sport? Like, how am I going to get that happen? And before my injury, I had coaches who had started up a program where they were recruiting junior coaches. So these were athletes who were still training, but were a little bit older, like 14, 15, 16, and who had potential to teach. And at the moment, I had no interest. I told my coaches, I was like, that, that sounds awful. I don't want to do that. They were like, no, it'll be great. You have to show up at, you know, eight in the morning. And as a teenager, I was like, eight, eight in the morning? Are you kidding me? <laughs> And I didn't want to do it. I just, I didn't even consider it. But then, of course, sitting, waiting around for three months, I knew that this was a way to get back in the gym. Not necessarily training, but I'd still be around my people and my community. So I reached out to my coaches and I asked if they were looking for another coach. And of course, they said yes. And in that moment, I was like, what did I sign myself up for? I, I don't even know if I want to do this. <laughs> So what did you sign yourself up for? Tell us a little bit about getting into it. Well, of course, it led to great things. And I'm so glad that I reached out to my coach. I felt comfortable to do that in the first place because I was able to figure out that I have more knowledge than I realize when it comes to coaching. I, I knew how to be a good athlete. I knew how to do that. But I didn't know how to be a good coach and what that looks like. And so... Luckily, because of the coaches I had, I was able to watch them and figure out what they do with athletes. And I was able to be mentored by them and work closely with the people I used to train with. And so these were my peers and I was now standing before them having to train them. And so it was a completely different perspective for me, but it's led to so many great things and it's been such a positive outcome for me. How, uh, Aria, how have you used your experience as an athlete in your coaching? And, and how's that maybe influenced your uh, coaching approach? Well, I think one thing, thing that I never wanted to forget while I was coaching is how athletes feel. As, but if you're once an athlete, I think you can always place yourselves back in those shoes. So I knew that when I was becoming a coach, I had to remember what my impact is on athletes because you can have a positive impact on an athlete and it can make them successful and not just in sport, but outside of sport. But if a coach has a negative impact on an athlete, that could turn someone and make them have a negative outlook on sport in general. And that might be the end of, you know, their sports journey. So I always wanted to be mindful of how I'm talking with athletes and, and teaching them and with that, I had to learn to be patient and understanding and flexible when it comes to teaching because I never wanted to be that reason that someone had a negative outlook on sport. You know, um, you know, I guess you sort of touched on this a little bit, but I mean, especially being younger than I think most people get into coaching, that's unique. And there's a lot of things that are unique to g gymnastics that might be different than a team sport or whatnot. But what were the challenges? Um of that transition and becoming a coach and, and how did you work through them? Um, yeah, like I said, I, I knew how to be a good athlete, but now I've learned how to be a good coach for my athletes. Um, and I think one thing was being mindful of your language with athletes. Um, I think sometimes coaches, we look at our athletes as our friends and Athletes want to look at their coaches like their friends at some point too. You want to have a special bond with them, but you also have to be mindful of how you're doing that. But I think sometimes we forget that we're teaching you know, young people and 
So let's say you're making jokes or being sarcastic with athletes. They look up to you. And so sometimes you may, may be making a joke, which is in good intentions, but athletes can sometimes take it personally and may not understand this. This is a joke and it's not meant for any harm. So that was a challenge, figuring out how to separate being a coach and being a friend to athletes, especially if these were people who used to be my peers. So I had to establish those boundaries, but so it was a challenge, but yeah, being mindful of language is a great start. And I think another thing too was, yeah, just not like being okay with not knowing all the answers at the beginning. And I mean, I still don't know all the answers. Like I've been coaching for this is my eighth year now and I'm still learning and still asking questions. That was a big challenge. As an athlete, you, you feel like you know what you're doing. Like that's your place. But when you're competing, you know what you're doing. And then as a coach, I felt like I knew nothing. Even though this was my sport I spent 11 years in, I, I felt like I knew nothing. So that was a big challenge for me in the beginning. Ariel Shimnowski is with us. She's the uh, coach education coordinator over at Sport Manitoba. Um, maybe a little later in most other sports than gymnastics, but a lot of athletes decide that they're making that transition. What advice, especially now that you've done that as well as your role with Sport Manitoba, um, what advice would you give to other athletes that are finishing up or have finished up that are considering making the transition um, to a coaching path? I think my advice to athletes trying to make that transition is to say yes before you say no right away. I think you have to give coaching a chance because as an athlete, you will surprise yourself with how much knowledge you truly know and how much you can actually give back to your sport. And as an athlete, you may not always feel like you know what it ha like you may not always know what it, it means to be a coach or what it takes to be a coach. But I think if you have the passion and the desire to stay in your sport, a leader will always arise from that. And new coaches, you are that opportunity to make sport better for future athletes. So if you're always thinking about doing coaching, it's always yes. Just give it a try. You know, and, and, and I think anyone that's been involved in pretty much any sport knows that, you know, with those volunteers and referees and coaches, um, we won't have our athletes. The games won't be played, and it's so important. I mean, in your role right now um, as the coach education coordinator, I'm sure there's plenty of resources uh, out there for folks that are maybe considering getting involved in coaching in a variety of sports. I mean, now where can people go if they want to find out a little bit more about what you and Sport Manitoba are doing and, and maybe be getting that path to saying yes? I think a great start is to check out the Sport Manitoba website. Um, under the coaching portion, we have many resources um, and links that direct you exactly where you need to go. We offer grants for coaches and officials, you know, wanting to take courses, but maybe have that financial barrier that they're encountering. So I would say start at the website, explore it. I think you'll find something new that you weren't expecting. And just know that there's resources out there to help create success for coaches out there. Well, it's uh, there are many opportunities out there, gang, to uh, turn your passion into action, become a coach or official in the sport you love. It really does take a community to play. Ariella, Ariella this has been great having you on the program. Wishing you a wonderful holiday season and uh, all the best to you and all the coaches in our province in 2024. Thank you, Andrew. You as well. Thanks for thanks for coming on. There it is, Ariella Shimnowski, and that's uh, a message from Sport Manitoba. Uh, and of course, with great support from Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries on It Takes a Community to Play. All right, great stuff with Ariella. She was uh, a really great guest, and I'm really enjoying these um, uh, interviews we're doing with Sport Manitoba. We'll have uh, some more guests into the new year on that. And uh, again, uh, big happy holidays to everyone over in the Sport Manitoba building, even our pal Ezzy Ginsberg. At Hockey Manitoba. Um, all right, let's get Remo in here. Remo, we've got uh, we've got some action to get to tonight. Let's get to the cool bet lines. And um, oh, we missed our exclusive by thanks to PLD and the Kings losing to the um, Sharks last night. However, they did have a great a great prop on the naughty list. Um, Ovi 
Uh, who was it? Ovi not to score, Debrinkat not to score, McCann not to score. So still ended up being a pretty good night. Um, but let's just get right to it. We've got the Saints and the Rams. Four points is the line right now on the Rams hosting New Orleans. I'd give New Orleans a much better shot if this game was in in the uh, in the dome in New Orleans, Remo. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm uh, feeling the Rams. Obviously, I'd like to see a nice game from Cooper Cup, but um, to me, the Rams are even though the records are the same. I like the Rams much better where they're at right now than the New Orleans Saints. Taysom Hill playing. Uh, yes, he is. And is Carr at quarterback? Uh, I believe they expect, let's get the latest. Is it Jameis? I haven't, you know, I'm so focused. I don't have any guys in fantasy on this game. I'm so focused on uh, my guys in my fantasy matchup, but yeah. the Rams have been playing very well. Their offense seems to come on. Uh, what Cooper cups back. Kyron Williams healthy. He's uh, been a beast carrying the rock. Uh, I know the saints defense has been decent, but can they keep up with the Rams? Uh, you know what? I always, you know, just, chicken out and take the favorite every time and it hasn't paid off for me lately but i'll still take the rams i'm going with yeah, them tonight we ride with the favorites uh the rams um the uh car is in his passing total is 236 and a half matt stafford's is 51 and a half and just checking out the props for the receiving yards as this is going to take us into our exclusive Alvin Kamara receiving yards 33 and a half and Cooper Cup 71 and a half. And that is what we settled on with our lock shop exclusive for tonight. We had that miracle win on Monday. We've had a good run in these primetime games. Thanks to Drew Locke's incredible last minute drive. Um, but our partner parlay for tonight is Rams minus three and a half. Alvin Kamara 34 or more receiving yards. And Cooper Cup, 72 or more receiving yards. We've got a nice little boost up to plus 550. And because there's no lock shop tomorrow, we locked in a couple of our exclusives for the weekend. We've got one for Christmas Eve. Patty, Jake, and I did this one together. We're riding with the Vikings, plus three and a half at home against the Lions. Um, it's a couple great numbers from a few of our chatters. Um, Lions, 6 and 0. Oh against the spread recently it's against the NFC North. Um, and they've done very well, 5-0 and against the Lions outright at home in their last five meetings. So we're taking Minnesota plus 3.5. We're going to lay 6.5 with the Broncos at home against the New England Patriots. And there's going to be fireworks in this Cowboys-Dolphins game. It's down to one point favorite for Miami right now. We couldn't decide on it, so let's just take the points. Over 49.5. That one is in at plus 6.30. And then my gift to all of you, my Christmas gift, the Ride with Huss Christmas Day special. Chiefs, minus nine and a half at home against the Raiders. We're going to take the points, plus 13 and a half for Tommy Cutlets and the Giants against the Eagles. Now, this could be a big get-right game for Philly, but they just have not looked very good. A divisional game. Let's think that this will be the underdog that covers a number on Christmas day. We're going to take 13 and a half with the giants. And then I'm laying the four and a half with the 49ers. I think the 49ers are significantly better than pretty much every other team in the NFL right now, including the Ravens, despite the fact that the Ravens are 19, three and one in their last 23 games as an underdog that's against the spread. I don't care. I'm riding with the Niners. So Chiefs minus nine and a half, Giants plus 13 and a half, Niners minus four and a half. That is up at plus 620 after a nice boost. Oh, and Patty, of course, has his primetime parlay over three and a half field goals. Aaron Donald, one sack or more, and Taysom Hill, 18 or more rushing yards. That one's in at plus 715. As far as the NHL goes tonight, big slate of games. Leafs and Sabres going at it in Buffalo. That'll be a there'll be tons of Leaf fans there. No doubt about that. Heading into the holidays, over in that game is seven. 
Uh, Leafs minus 147 favorite. The Caps are in CBUS to take on the Blue Jackets. Capitals minus 116 road faves. Uh, Pomo's Panthers are a big minus 222 favorite against the Blues. The Flyers and Preds go at it in Philly. Philly, a minus 115 favorite against Nashville. We'll certainly go for the team playing the Central Division team there. Go Philly. Uh, Canes and Penguins in Pittsburgh. Carolina, the road favorite at minus 140. This will be a good one, Reem. Who you got in this one? Vegas coming off a loss in Carolina, taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Very close to a pick em. That is a tight one. Yeah, I'm looking at Money Puck. They have uh, pretty similar as well. I'll go with the home team in in Tampa Bay, although some qu- concerns about you know their depth as well after and the, what the future of the team is going to be after trading away basically everything for Tanner Janot. Yeah, <laughs> good point. <laughs> they um, basically straight up pick them between the Devils yeah. and the Oilers. This is a game Edmonton needs to have. I mean, they ran off that eight in a row. Well, they've lost three in a row. They've got the Rangers tomorrow in the second end of back to backs. They got to have this one tonight. Uh, they're minus 109. Devils are minus 108. <clears throat> um, the Canucks are in Dallas to take on the Stars. Would love to see the Canucks win and keep the Jets in first place. Vancouver plus 119. Dallas minus 140. Uh, the Habs are in Minnesota to take on the Wild. The Wild minus 140, 183 favorites. And uh, and funny enough, the Avalanche only a minus 164 favorite at home against the Senators who blew that 3-1 lead with Jacques Martin back on the bench and lost 4-3 to the Coyotes their last time out. Uh, the Flames are in Anaheim to take on the Ducks. Minus 188 is the Flames a road favorite in the final game. The Coyotes in San Jose to take on the Sharks. Arizona, minus 163. This is a huge slate of games tonight, Remo. You got a DraftKings cooked up for a WSD? I, I haven't. I've been busy uh, with pre-show stuff. Uh, I'll have to find time. Uh, find time to make one, but uh, Arizona, man, Arizona's an intri- intriguing team uh, this year, and how will Colorado bounce back? But I think the game of the night has to be this Edmonton New Jersey game. Us uh, seven is the total. Neither team, you know, or the Oilers don't play much defense. New Jersey doesn't have a goalie. Uh, you got some elite, elite talent in McDavid and and Hughes. I imagine we'll see a lot of goals. There could game. be a stack. There could be a I DK could, stack in that game. I, yeah, um, I've been a lot on the uh, yeah on the Devils too lately. They've they score a lot of goals, but also give up a lot. So it's good for fantasy. And one team that's kind of interesting that I've actually been playing in fantasy is Columbus. Us, uh, they've got this. Uh, I just picked him up. Take Marchenko. Yes, I just picked him up in my league. Real Marchenko, if he's able to get a hat trick the other day, and um, they're second line. The Chinakov, Vra. Bronkov and Marchenko, uh, they're all on power play one. They're, they had a big game against the Sabres, and now they're playing Washington, who played last night, and they won. Novechkin didn't score, in case you're keeping track. No, he didn't. He was He's on the naughty list on, uh, on the cool bit. There's also some fun uh, NHL exclusives for tonight including today's naughty list. Let me just pull that up. Na- this is actually a, a favorite the one. Naughty That's list? The naughty list, and it's guys not to score. No. Last night, it was McCann, Debrinkat, mm-hmm. and Ovi, uh, and that one cashed at plus 235. Today's naughty list is, where is it here? Austin Matthews, Brady Kachuk, and Nikita Kucherov, all not to score, 4-1. to one. Oh, that's not bad. It, well, I mean, the number is really good. I mean, yeah. one of those guys probably will get it, but that's why you're getting four to one on it. So, what, what about the Hughes? <laughs> all I want for Christmas is Hughes with uh, yeah. <laughs> all the Hughes brothers getting on the score sheet. Jack Hughes a goal, Luke Hughes one point, and Quinn Hughes one assist plus six fifty. Actually, I might get a piece of that one today as well. Um, anyways, it's all there in the exclusives. Our lock shop stuff is up there in that uh, category as well. And if you haven't played a cool bet before, use the promo code WST. When you make your first deposit, we'll hook you up with a 100% uh, bonus up to 200 bucks over at CoolBet. Um, great show today, Remo. You know, we have to thank Ariel Shimnowski for jumping on. Of course, Billick and Jeff Hamilton, my opponent this week. 
Um, but man, a real treat to have Gabriel Velarde, who is, I think, without a doubt, the hottest player in the NHL right now. And uh, tomorrow should be a lot of fun. A holiday visit from Sarah Orleski, mm-hmm. Weeb's World. Yes. And we count down to puck drop tomorrow. The game we've been looking forward for a while. Boston Bruins in town. We'll see whether the Jets can keep on rolling against another one of the top teams in the league. Yeah, and Hacksaw is bringing his uh, NFL Christmas notebook. Uh, amaz- yes. Amazing how NFL has just taken over every day. Thursday, football. Saturday, there's two games. Sunday, you know, a full day of games. And hey, did the, did the NBA even bother putting uh, games on Christmas this year? <laughs> <laughs> they, they did, but no one knows I've never about heard them about now it. that the NFL is on. No, not even. <laughs> Let's see. Did we'll they talk have, more hoops I, once, once? Yeah, they got a full done. day. They they got a full day. Uh, Milwaukee and the Knicks. Man, I don't even know some of these logos anymore. Like the Nuggets and Warriors, Celtics, Lakers, Sixers, Heat, Mavericks, Suns. So there's some. There's some is Raptors not on, not on the list, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, NFL just came in over the top and took over. Uh, yep. Every day of the week, basically. <laughs> Except for, two, what, Tuesday, Wednesday have been spared. Well, and, man, that game on Christmas night, and I mentioned it with Gabriel Velarde earlier, but uh, Ravens and Niners, 11-3, like and 11-3. Three, and three, the t- It could very well be. I mean, you're talking about the number one seed right now in both conferences, and uh, mm. what a Christmas treat that is yeah. from the National Football League. T. Will, no show Christmas or Boxing Day, Correct. We will actually have four days off. We might do a little content in between. Check our socials. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, no show on uh, on um, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. But we'll be back on Wednesday as the Jets are back, back in action on the 27th. What is that game in Chicago, I think? The Jets? Let me check. Yeah, the uh, game on uh, – let's see. I got it right here. Uh, yes, Chicago on the 27th. So um, after a wonderful Christmas, we'll be back on the 27th. And then uh, heading right into the weekend with those back-to-backs with the uh, Wild. We'll have New Year's Day off. And then we'll be back at it on the 2nd because the Jets are home that night to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, thanks again. Great crowd today in here. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. A thumbs up for Gabriel Velarde, who joined us today. If you joined us late, you can rewind earlier in there and make sure to get that. Thanks to the sponsors that make our show happen each and every day. And all of you for making WST a part of yours. Have a great Thursday night. We'll see you tomorrow to get ready for Jets, Bruins, and the holiday weekend on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Oh, my God. Shut it down. Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast feed at winnipegsportstalk.com.